Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's early. And it's time for day six of the Alec Murda murder trial. This is a double homicide. Alec Murda is accused of killing his wife and son at their property in South Carolina. There was a fiery bit at the end of the day yesterday, but so far the prosecution's case has been laying foundation for things at the crime scene. We have not started connecting the dots yet. They are merely showing you the dots. It's like dot, 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 and that's it. We have not begun connecting those things yet, but at the end of the day yesterday during witness testimony, they were playing the second of what we're told are three recorded interviews with law enforcement that Murdoch gave. In those interviews with law enforcement at the end of yesterday's, it sounds like he says, I did, or it's bad, I did them so bad. However, it also sounds like he said, it's bad, I did, it's so bad, or it's bad, they did them so bad, or they did them so bad. There is a lot, a lot of controversy over what was actually said. The witness who was in the car, one of the off- one of the two officers in the car testified that what he heard was, it's bad, I did them so bad. The prosecution stopped and said, I did them so bad, and kind of made a note of that statement. And we all went, wait, what did you just say? Because this was the closest thing to Alec Murdoch saying anything about it. I think there are many interpretations of this. I do not think it is the thing the prosecution should hang their hat on because today in cross-examination, defense is going to go, so um, special agent, you think he said, I did him so bad. And you looked at him and went, yep, let's not arrest this man for another year. That's That was the decision that you made? Sure. Did you think it then? When did you think that this is when he said that? And the defense is going to continue to try to poke doubt into this case, even into what Alec Murdoch already said. And I already think there's doubt on what he actually said or what was said through tears in that video. I will be interested to see this video when we have not just the audio through court, but when we have the actual video and we know that evidence will come out to see what it sounds like. So with that replay crew, love you. It's time to roll. I'm going to roll the intro. Court will be back in just a minute. They take their sweet tea time. I appreciate this judge. He's not rushing anybody except when the attorneys aren't ready. And then he's like, do you have a question? Do we need to take a break? I'll go sit in my chambers and play free cell. Like, I don't need to sit here and stare at your faces. Can we let the jury go back and sit not on display? Can we do that maybe? <sighs> Today's going to be interesting. Um, I have higher hopes for this cross-examination than I did for yesterday's, but that's saying a lot. Yesterday's cross-examination was, um, you know, all bun, no burger. So let's go. Let's go. It's time. Let me know where you're coming in from. I've got um, hot tea and water and a snow day up in here. So you tell me where you're coming in from and what you've got going on. Welcome to The Emily Show. I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst and big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years. I'm a former prosecutor, and I break down the legal side of pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. We should just get into it. Let's go. It is so good to see you all. David, sometimes there is a slight delay for going live, depending on the platform, but on the replay crew, I think you can almost always see it, but I try to give it that space so that so that I'm not cut off in the middle of starting, but sometimes I don't get it right because we are professionals. AV said, Emily, please watch the HBO special. It gives so much context and we need your commentary on. Unfortunately, a lot of the context that's given in the HBO documentary is stuff that can't come into court. Biggest question about HBO documentaries, how is Jim Griffin given comment in it? He's an attorney on this case. He is Paul Murdoch's attorney. The first the first episode of the HBO special seems to be just talking about Paul Murdoch not being a great human and being irresponsible and things like that. The second episode, from what I've seen, because I did start watching it, goes into the death of Stephen Smith. Um, with more detail, there are things about the documentary that I don't like, uh, choices that they made that I don't like, particularly when it comes to showing crime scene photos. I don't care if they blur face, they're still crime scene photos. Um, in a documentary in that context, it's not a choice I would necessarily make, endorse, or be a part of. Um, so there's that, 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 so there are some things that have rubbed me the wrong way, but there is additional context. 
For those of you that have not heard Alec Murdoch's 911 call when he called about being shot in the head on the side of the road, and whether he was trying to actually get insurance funds or whether he was trying to make it look like his family is a victim and being, tar or he's a victim and being targeted, I don't know. The 911 call from when he staged getting shot on the side of the road sounds a lot like the 911 call when he found his, um, when he found his family. There's a lot of similarities between those two 911 calls. I don't think that's going to come in in this case. I don't think we're going to see that. I don't think the jury will know that the 911 call where he's lying sounds a lot like the 911 call where he's not lying <clears throat> or where he might be lying. Ready for the jury? Your Honor, can I just make one brief comment? Yes. The defense. Um, and I've talked to all, all of us over here. We want to thank the clerk of court oh, Jesus. for her um, assistance. Every time we need something, she has been there for us. The Colton County Sheriff's Department is providing security, has given us total access to our client. We have uh, we feel like we've been treated extraordinarily Why well are we by thanking all the court, court personnel. And I want to put on the record, since there seems to be a national media interest here, I've tried many cases in many jurisdictions, and I've never been treated at this level. Statement for the media? And understanding. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely echo that, sir. Uh, everybody's been great. Absolutely. Oh, Jesus. I echo that as well. Great. Bring the jury. Yay us. Yay us. I'm so glad we put that on the record. They are bringing the jury. I love the way the judge says, bring the jury. Um, I'm glad we needed to put that on the record for the fuller courtroom today, much fuller courtroom today. This has to be awkward as a jury. Normally, everyone doesn't turn and stare at you as you are walking into court, especially this back part of court here is much, much fuller than it was in previous days. Is my mouse pointer fixed today? No. Um, but I love that we started the morning with a bit of gratitude, um, even though it was completely unnecessary. It's just, the court staff is no doubt working overtime on this. I'm going to switch to our three-piece feed, even though when we have audio today, I think I'm going to switch back to not the law and crime feed. The law and crime hey, good feed. Good morning. Day, day number seven. They've gained their Space audio case. so um, much we'll that it's painful. Have our back. So the witness is back on the stand, but they have gained the case. The they have gained it up so much that sometimes this audio is really difficult to deal with. Um. And that's a problem too. So we, we're going to switch back and forth between feeds today. So it is cringe, but also like, hey, we started the day with gratitude. It did. It felt a bit ick. It was completely well, unnecessary. You, you're still under oath. It didn't cross examination. Need to so we're beginning cross examination. Hey, Griffin. Wait a second. Harpoolian was, wasn't Dick the one <laughs> objecting? Maybe not. On June 8th, I understood that, that was your first involvement in this case, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir, that is correct. And, and you went to Moselle on the morning of the June 8th? I was en route to Moselle, uh, got rerouted to the office, and then yeah, the sound on this feed's a bit different. Then back to Moselle. That's right, you interviewed Rogan Gibson, and then went to Moselle. That is correct. And what time did you get to Moselle? I was around lunchtime when I got, when I got there. <laughs> and as I understood from your testimony that you're your role was Jim and Jeff objecting primarily is because in this case is that because you know a lot about guns and ammunition. Did I understand that correctly? That was not my sole role. I was at the search of the residence. Oh, that's right. He objected about the guns. He objected about the um, familiarity with firearms. He objected yes. about the guns. He objected and, uh, about other stuff. And, and you I don't know if I can get this audio today. The residence with other agents, and we saw those agents. Some of them on the body cam video that played yesterday. Uh, yes, sir. I was in the gun room. Same witness. And um, and this search was a consent search. They right? didn't even start with that. That is correct. Room. Yes, sir. I mean, you were there executing a search warrant. I'll right? start. Uh, I'll no, pin sir, the I'll comment start. one second. And, and were you aware, though, that there was a search warrant that had been obtained the night before? Probably. I was before. aware of the consent, the search. Uh, at the incident location, this is Agent Croft. Uh, it's it's common practice. Laura's that they father get a search warrant for okay. to process the scene. Yes. Were there any limitations 
that you are aware of on the scope of the consent to search? Uh, no, sir. And so as far as you knew and understand, understood then and understand yeah, today. I might have to switch. You or other agents that's led could have searched that house from top to bottom on the 8th. Is that correct? Uh, other agents went through the residence with family members. And there were no limitations on what the other agents uh, could have looked for, right? Again, I can't say what limitations was placed on them as they walked through the house. I, I was in the gun room. Okay. Well, to your knowledge, did anyone look for bloody Damn it, clothes, Jim. Or clothes in the house? Stick to asking him edge. questions about what he did. I was in the gun room and I was collecting guns and ammunition, sir. Now, now you, you mentioned that you... Um, had been provided some information about the type of ammunition that was used down at the crime scene where Maggie and Paul were murdered. Is that correct? That is correct. I and think you, we've got it one, uh, tuned in. If we go to audio, I'll, one, I'll probably switch. Ammunition was a because it does it is peaky shell casing, and it feels like where that this station yeah, has was. gained and, it and up. Who relayed the information to you as the type of ammo that was used for the murder of Maggie and Paul? So. It came Some from of the, the others are better. team. Uh, I don't recall exactly who, who called me or who told me the information, but I was relayed the information through our investigative team that was at the scene. All right. So you, you were informed that, you know, look out, see what you can find in the gun room related to 300 blackout. Is that correct? It wasn't limited to specifically 300 blackout. It is blackout. on the top it as was, much as the topic can that get. That was uh, a round of interest. And then the, the other round of interest was yes, the special gauge, ma master that for taint correct. did win yesterday. And were you given any information as to what specific type of twelve gauge ammunition was used at the crime scene? I don't and think either. we're going to get there. Twelve gauge, what believed to be. I don't a, think we're going to get there until uh, we get to the corner. Turkey load or BB load, and then a buckshot. Okay. <clears throat> and. Um, Talk to you a little bit about the 300 blackout ammunition. You, you testified yesterday that the grains, um, the weight of the ammunition found at the house was 147 grains. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. That's what's on the uh, the uh, empty box, which I located. And is uh, is this the empty box? Uh, State's Exhibit 213 that you're referring to? It's interesting they're correct. going over this in cross, and, this, and I'm uh, not quite sure why. I think I would have I started recall, with the big uh, elephant in the room. Why start with this? This pack of ammo on this exhibit says, has a um, If I was the defense, honestly, I might ignore all the ammo, and, and my... $11.99. My argument would be... It's a hunting lodge. Who the fuck July, cares about June, their ammo? That proves literally uh, nothing except they owned ammo. I would have ignored I it. I don't know what the ammunition cost. And said, I don't care. Well, they have ammo everywhere. They're hunters. I, I don't know. The and I would look at this local jury and be like, you're not going to prosecute someone right. for being a hunter. And, and are you familiar? There's basically two types of ammunition. Just for ignore the, it like it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. Supersonic and subsonic. I am, sir. And the subsonic is is the heavier of the two. They might be trying to bury the elephant. Right? That is correct. And that would be a, a 220 grain. Uh, I, just don't, just I just don't know if and, it matters truly. And the most popular <clears throat> ammunition for hunting is the supersonic, the 147 grain ammunition. You aware of that? I can't say the most popular would be, but... I am aware that 147 grain is used for hunting. And and, and you're aware that um, the 300 blackout has, uh, has, has, it's not a rare gun in that area of Hampton and Colleton County, is it? It's not as common as the General 223 or the AR-15, uh, 308, uh, different caliber rifles. It, it's not as common. Not as common. But... There are plenty out there, correct? I can't testify as to how many is out there, sir. Not, I understand. But it's not, <laughs> I understand. Not Let me try it again and see if I can get it that way. On June 8, 2021, it wasn't. I had seen one before, yes, sir. And, um, <clears throat> and then the 12-gauge, 
you didn't know what type, you weren't given any type 12 gauge you're looking for. You just, from the information from the crime scene, right? The type of weapon I was looking for? No, yes, sir. No, sir. And then um, were you given information as to the size of the 12 gauge shell? Two and a half inch, three inch. It was, I think they're attacking uh, the 12 gauge because it's easier three to attack. Three three it doesn't Magnum have the tool what marking. Was, uh, what I was given. And that was on the bug shot. I, I was given three inch Magnum of, of shotgun capable of shooting a three inch Magnum. Okay. Now, and we're going to get to some of these shotguns here in a minute, but that um, the, um, the, the Browning light doesn't even shoot a three inch shell, does it? It does not. Two and three quarters what it shoots. Right. And yet you seized it? I secured it, yes, sir. And the jury came in this morning and is now going, really? And, um, introduce it in, in this case. We're arguing about ammo? I did, sir. Yes. He didn't None introduce it technically. Couldn't even fire the bullet that killed Paul, right? It did not fire the rounds that was located. They don't the need to go through right. any of this. He's in fact he's none probably, of the shotguns that you brought yesterday, according to the ballistic report, he's your leading, lab analysis fired the shots that killed Paul. He's leading to correct? the prosecution's overreaching because the they have no case in front of me, which is fair. Well, you certainly know that after June, he 8, could get there faster. Sled was diving. Everyone in this in case. In ponds and waterways, them. looking for the murder weapons. Isn't that correct? We were diving, looking for potential evidence from the scene. Have you ever found the murder weapons? Your <clears> knowledge? <throat> Objection, Your Honor. <clears throat> That's not the side of the scope of his knowledge. Objection's overruled. Wrong objection. Not that I'm aware of, sir. It really is the wrong objection. Might have been. It's, it's are, a perfectly are you fine question. Familiar with what ballistics tests were done on Buster's 300 blackout? That's a whether fair that was excluded as a weapon used to kill his mother. Again, I am not. I not don't my have job. A report in front of me, and I'm not able to testify to that, sir. There's a lot of not my job because it's not <clears throat> truly. It's not his job. And you, you brought these empty turkey load. Uh, exhibit 214. I think I this is all leading well, to look, y'all. The state has no case and they're overreaching, and that's why we're all that here. Is the boxes I, I think that's yes, the point. These, these were empty, yes, sir. They were, and these were um, found in the list. trash can, yes, sir. They were found in a trash bag, yes, sir. Okay, but also it's a hunting and, cabin, and so you, who cares? Uh, let's see, exhibit. Did I say we were on this? Has exhibit number. Exhibit 90 is the, doing the this, Browning like Auto 5 Light real quick. 12 gauge, which we already talked about, wouldn't even hold a three inch shell, but there was no shells, no ammo in, in the, the Browning weapon, which is exhibit 90 you brought to court, right? There was no rounds in that. The weapon. objection was when outside the scope of his eight, knowledge. No rounds in, right? It's that not correct, really an right? objection. It's, it's on the witness to say the, um, that's. I can't the testify Mossberg to that. model Ulta Mag. No, none of my trials are on video, thank God. That would have made me very nervous. You have a 12 gauge shot shell written on the outside. So there was one um, shot shell. Yep. Studio, I'll tell in you at the end of evidence what I think about gun, a directed right? verdict. I think it's that very correct, unlikely. Yes, and do you remember if it was because this buckshot got passed, or buckshot? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care if it's it buckshot or birdshot. I got Will passed, um, this got passed a grand jury on something. And I think that'll be enough and to get them passed a motion to dismiss at the end of evidence. 89 and ask if you can pull out the shot, the ammo in there and, and tell this jury if that's bird shot or bug shot. I think, I think they're trying to show that, you know, every, nobody's taking responsibility. Everybody's like, oh, it wasn't my job. So I'm going to answer this when I get a bit of a break. Um... I think they're trying to, I, that's a very, um, timely, that's a very, very good point. They might be trying to bury the information that that very critical 300 blackout AR style rifle is missing. It's a very good point. It is, uh, um, 
Browning That's a very good 12 point. gauge, three and a half inch magnum, two and a quarter, number seven and nine. No, the prosecution That's shouldn't tell the witnesses what to say. Right? The witnesses have to answer honestly. That's my understanding, yes, sir. All right, thank you. Put it back in there. So the witnesses have to say what they either... I wasn't in charge of that, or that's not within the scope of my duties. Each witness has to answer that authentically for them. I think I said it was trial day six. Today's trial day seven. I apologize. I had to go look at my own um, title to remember what day it was. It's been like that. <laughs> it's been like that. Day seven. We're on trial day seven. This is Jim Griffin, the one who's in the HBO documentary. Thank you. Yes. So. So there are actually two missing. Critical two. In the Mossberg, there's one. The Dawn, there's there was a replacement blackout. Now the other, the Benelli and Super that Black one's missing. Eagle three had two unfired shot shells, according to your notes on the box. And this is Exhibit 91. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. And do you recall whether any of these was bird shot, boat shot? Do you remember? I would have to look at them again, sir. All right. Angela Smith, the test, the text was late because I was late and I send the text myself and I forgot to do it last night. I normally do them the night before and um, I didn't because I had a bunch of kiddo stuff going on. So, uh, yep, the text was late. That's me. <laughs> that's just that's just me. It happens sometimes. So apologies, um, though. I do start every morning for this trial at eight twenty five. Well, ideally somewhere between eight twenty five and Court starting is when we start in the morning. So I'll always be here. There's a they have not uh, black round in that, here that's a three inch number four. They have uh, not confirmed that yet. Pellet. We know and that then they did. A, uh, seven two and a half. We're still in the prosecution's house. case and probably will be uh, the rest of this week. But an eighty nine millimeter. So. And then those are <laughs> both turkey loads. Y'all can right? choose. Just be be wise. They say a lot of things in this. Be wise. Uh, it could be used for turkey, yes. Sir. Well, let's just be clear. Neither one of those are buck shot, correct? No, sir. Thank So we're going to be in the prosecution's again, case. These were ruled for out as being. Lynn's, it's okay being new to this murder, case. Uh, Paul, right? There are two murder weapons. I can't testify to any lab reports. I don't have the lab reports and it's out of the scope of what I. Outside of the did. scope is a good answer. Um, Was it correct to say a rifle and a shotgun. that you did not find any guns loaded in the gun room or anywhere at Moselle that had a bird shot and a buck shot? loaded at the same time the only weapons i've recovered are the weapons that are there uh, i'm working the on that jillian that we have just looked at yes sir and if you or another agent in your presence made a representation that we found in the gun room a gun with similar loads as that that we found at the crime scene that would be an incorrect statement would it i don't think it would be incorrect to say that there was Guns were loaded in a similar fashion using two diff different types of ammunition, two different loads. That's the point. Well, there's no buckshot in any of the, the two guns that you found That's loaded. That's the point. Not when we collected them, no, sir. And I'll tell you why in a minute. The, the turkey loads or the bird loads that we just looked at. Those, um, the pellets and those are lead, are they not? I would have to look at the actual boxes that came in or the, I didn't pick that up uh, yesterday. Pellets that are in it. Some Probably of them I was are steel. I'm not sure. Story of my life. So do you know the difference between the steel and lead? Noted on all my Do I know the difference? Yeah. yeah what's, what, <laughs> do what, I know the difference? The difference? Like, obviously. Why, why would you have steel versus lead? Steel <laughs> shot is used a lot in waterfowl hunting. Uh, that type of stuff. Uh, lead shot is used for normal everyday uh, rabbit, squirrel, dove. Small things. Well, we do have some boxes here, 214. Can you tell us whether this is lead or steel? <clears throat> so.
So the witness was being cross-examined about the fact that there were weapons at the house loaded with two different kinds of ammo. Remember the, the Winchester 12 gauge, uh, um, shot lock lead is a Turkey load. Number four, the defense is arguing that Alec Murdoch was so beside himself with grief. He loaded the shotgun that he took back up to the kennels with two different types of ammo in that 12 gauge. This witness testified that other guns in the gun room on that big open the rack Brown were loaded with two I different kinds of ammo. It indicated on the box. So it goes more the, to that's their uh, habit is, or a the common telephone. bad practice and well, not. Let me ask, is there a turkey that on the face of that box? There is a turkey on the face of the box. Where there's, there's a turkey on the box? Sure, sir, show the class. Waterfowl bird or land bird? A uh, turkey is a land bird, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you asked him what it was for, and he said commonly for this. It doesn't mean it's also not for turkey. But com hunters might not use it for turkey. Jim. Um, but and that's what he's getting to. The same old federal. It's got a turkey on the front. All right. So those three boxes look like they're turkey loads, right? Joe, no. I don't think appears. a 12-gauge can <laughs> safely shoot a 16-gauge. Did what you find any waterfowl <clears throat> shell boxes? At Moselle on June 8th. What he's saying is I that not other guns were loaded with two different types. From did you collect any waterfowl, unfired shotgun, 12 gauge shotgun shells at Moselle? I love it. On June the 8th. Not that I'm aware of, sir. Yes, we've Have learned you ever about collected turkeys. Unfired shotgun shells for waterfowl at Moselle in part of this investigation. I do not recall collecting any waterfowl shot. I don't know why we're talking about Are waterfowl. Are you aware, sir? Other than this dude said waterfowl. That the shot that blew Paul Murdoch's head off was Winchester dry lock, steel waterfowl, 12 gauge ammunition. How do they know that? I was aware that we were, that the uh, pellets were steel. Well, you can look at the outside of the, of the spent shell casing and see that it's Winchester dry lock, correct? If I had the shell casing, yes, sir, I could okay. see it. Get it? And you know that to be a waterfowl, a duck load, correct? I know that it's primarily used for duck load, yes, sir. And you know that's what killed Paul Murdoch. Mm, he didn't say that. <clears throat> I do know that it was still shot. He's not and backing down on his answers. similar ammunition that Moselle on June the 8th or any time after that, correct? I did not, sir. Kristen asked, why use such graphic language? And now, Kristen's not the only one. A lot of you asked. The defense is going to do that the entire shown case. Shown pictures of the gun room. To make it harder for the jury to conceive a parent could do that to their kid. And I think you testified there were some 25 and guns smart. and gun racks. It's unpleasant, but it's smart. It's roughly 20 to 25 guns. And this is 1,700 acres of hunting land? Because most parents yes, are like, sir. how could someone do and, that? But we know I mean, did it shock that you to see that horrible many things against each other. Guns, and they were all hunting guns, were they not? It, but it makes it hard. Did not shock me to see that many hunting guns. And a lot of people in Hampton, Colleton, this part of Low Country, no one's shocked to see that many guns with those types of guns. Isn't that correct? Nobody shocked. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I feel like he's explaining this to the internet, nothing, not the jury. You didn't find anything unusual about the number of guns they had in their house, right? This I is a jury that probably right. hunts as well. This is not odd in this county. Now, you mentioned um, that you know something about the injection pattern of the. The guns are missing. Why wouldn't the ammo be missing? Because lots of other guns that? are still there, I think. I remember testifying that it ejects to the right and slightly backwards. Oh, Cynthia, I'm doing the podcast tomorrow about that. I talk mostly about Harputlian, but yes, having. And Jim and Dick you doing this when Paul's the victim is. I'm a city boy. May I stand? Yeah, yes, sir, unpleasant. Please. Do you mind, y'all? Good stuff. So, why would the amount of guns someone owns point to culpability? It would only be in an area, Olivia, that it's unusual. This isn't unusual, and I think they're trying to remind not just the jury, but possibly also the internet, that this isn't unusual. Um, just in case any jurors don't have experience with guns, they don't want a juror to say, well, obviously they have guns. Some people have 
real real polarizing feelings about guns. I think they're trying to make sure. The direction that the shells would go. I think they're trying to make sure that nobody on the jury is polarized by the number of guns. They giggled when Jim Griffin's calling himself a city boy. Across my would be my right shoulder. Okay. And and so it, Lori, I appreciate that. Listen, it was a hunting lodge. Who would be surprised? The, the chat was time, yesterday. Right? The chat was like, "That's, that's a lot of guns." Show. And every time you pull and the then the rest of the chat that has hunting lodges is like, um, off the, "Seems toward, seems the right shoulder toward the rear, right? As long as there's ammunition in the magazine." And, and how far does it go before it lands? <clears throat> Roughly, I can't answer that, sir. Foot, two feet, three I, feet. I can't testify to how far it, an ejection. Uh, ejected shell is going to expand from the okay. weapon. That's, that's Can you put it back? Please? Christine yes. says in Canada this is way unusual. Yes, in a lot of places what this would be way up, unusual. Point in this area, area, it's not. I think they saw it before. Let's just be clear. So, the thermal scope. Why we have that regional that juries. Here. And, and you've got to charge that, right? That's sort of a, you've got to plug it in, battery operated. Wait, what? Sort. It would have some sort of power. I don't know if it's a rechargeable battery or batteries that has to be replaced. Okay. It needs batteries? And the thermal scope is for hunting at oh, night. Oh, for the scope. Right. Okay, that makes sense. It could be used for hunting at night, yes, sir. A regular scope. To pick up infrared, it's it's heat sensitive. It's kind of hard to hunt at night with a regular scope. Because it doesn't pick up. Scope at light would work, but this is also used. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. I wonder if they're going to just ignore it entirely. Do you, do they ignore this perceived or argued slipped confession or not? I have questions because <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if they will or if they won't. Is that the crime scene drawing? Agent Croft, I'm going to show you what's, what went into evidence yesterday is Defendant's Exhibit 29. Um, and can you, can you Anna, see it from up there? I think this was an overwhelming. Uh, yes, sir, I can. Um, o overwhelming and, uh, thought about the carelessness with these, the guns. Uh, like that they're just seven, five, willy nilly six. guns everywhere. I'll, I'll just, it's identified on, on the, in the legend over here, but these are 300 blackout shell cases. Do you understand that to be the case? Uh, Cosmo, I don't doubt that what you're saying is what he said, but it sounds like he doesn't uh, five understand conflict all that well. Print out on the left hand side there. When you're right, it's not on. <laughs> I didn't even think about this well, fact that the scope might be batteries. If, if these are in fact shell casings. Okay. From what you just described to the jury, uh, the ejection path of the 300 blackout, where would the person Objection. shooting the gun be standing? Asked and answered. He already said he to, couldn't to answer that. Markers. He already said he couldn't answer that. Objection. He already Objection. said he couldn't answer that. He, he already said that was, again, not the objection I would have made. He said objection not qualified as an expert. The if if so he's seven, already five, answered this and six are shell casings. Why is it relevant about the scope? I was just curious because they brought the it up. Would be to the upper side of those rounds, somewhere near this line in that area. I can't testify to that line or or any kind of angle of that line. No sir. Understand, but it would be on the side of the line. It, it'd be up in here somewhere, right? It would be on the left-hand side of where those numbers are. It, it would be the, likely that the shooter would be on the left-hand side of where those numbers are if you're looking at it from where I'm sitting. The shooter would be on the left-hand side of these numbers and a little forward of these numbers. Is that right? That's not what he said. I can't say because I'm not sure if, if the round if the ejection hit something on the way out or if the, Yep, that's, uh, if that's why he said he couldn't testify to it. On the ejection, I don't know. I can't testify to how far they would go. I just know that a normal 300 ejects to the right um, and slightly backwards. He is holding yes. his ground on that, which is fair. I can only testify to what I know. And he's trying to get this um, 
defense oh, um, this defense attorney is trying to get him to stretch you were at, that you narrow were, box that he's staying in. You were at he's Moselle not do on, it. on the eighth. I think we've established that. And uh, did you go back on the thirteenth? I did, sir. And did you go? You went to the house on the thirteenth as well. I did, sir. Okay. And and we, and we saw the body cam uh, from where you're picking up shell casings around the side door. 300 blackout shell casings around the side door. Um, and I think, was that the 8th when you got the shell casing next to the... <laughs> that was around 2 o'clock on the 8th, a little after 2. Now, 2 p.m.? Jerry will have the video if they want to see it. But but as you're standing out there, you can see the rooftops the of chat the shed like building to know Captain and America some other structures Jim, down at the kennels the chat has where questions. the murders took place. You remember, you can see the rooftops? I would think you could see the rooftops, uh, but but that's all you could see, correct? They're really trying to put people in the trees around down there by the dog kennels. No, well, sir. There's planted pines between the residents and the kennels. That's so odd. So the fact of the matter is, you can't see people at the dog kennels from the house based on your personal observations. Is that correct? From where I was standing, looking, no, sir. On the side of the house. Now. You also testified about the location of Maggie's phone, how it was found. Yes, sir. Did you go out there when it was located? I'm interested. Yes, sir. I did. Um, you recall how it was located? Yes, sir. I do. How was it located? Uh, we sent information to the phone company for a uh, ping. Uh, the ping was actually twenty so something hundred meters. Not which is find a long my ways. iPhone. We then learned that she had find my oh find my iPhone on her phone. Uh, one of the family members assisted with uh, locating that phone, uh, getting a better location on the phone, and we were ultimately able to find it. So you 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 <clears throat> found the phone. You pinged the phone cell company, and the cell company was wrong. Family member using wait, wait, wait. find my iPhone, and I I think it was John Marvin is the one that assisted us with that. And do you think? John Marvin was using Buster's phone to do that? I don't have a clue what he was using. The, and then when the phone was was collected, that's interesting. you provided the password. Remember, you testified the password was provided. We right. were provided the pin to open the phone. Yes. Yeah. Are you aware that Alec Murdoch provided the pin, the sled, so they could open Maggie's phone? Again, I don't know where we where the passcode or pin came from, but we, we were provided a pin. Cap Fink, yep, it was a shotgun and a rifle, and all the victims have stippling. Do you know what a Faraday bag is? Uh, yes, sir, I do. They haven't did anyone introduced have a Faraday bag? the coroner I yet. Did, I did not have a Faraday bag. That day. Was, Most people don't the have the purpose them. of a Faraday bag? Most law enforcement uh, don't just have them. tampering from outside sources once a cell phone is collected. It's a metal mesh. Put the so cell phone inside a Faraday bag so it can't hit Wi-Fi, cell phone towers. Again, I, I, it prevents any tampering from outside to... To prevent anybody this is to communicate not a financial crime. It, it would be unusual place. to use a Faraday it's a bag. It's a tool to secure the evidence to prevent tampering. It is or, or intentional tampering, right? Yes, sir. It is one tool that can be used. Who's and tampering with, with Maggie's phone Maggie's after phone she's murdered? Put in a Faraday bag when it was seized on the side of Moselle Road. This is no, a it was not. red herring. Did anyone ask or break, bring up the fact that Hey, maybe we should get a Faraday bag. She's a victim. I did not ask. Anybody asking your presence? Not that I'm aware of. Jim's trying to make a whole lot of nothing out of it, or a whole lot of something out of that, which is nothing. But again, now, they're on, going on through. June 8th, the police didn't do this. They didn't do uh, that. I don't know how they argue rush to judgment when they're like, the police it, didn't do any of this you shit. That Alec found his wife and son murdered. He was the one that discovered them, correct? Yes, sir. And on June 8th, you knew that he was Maggie's husband, Paul's father, immediate family, correct? Yes, sir. And yep. as part of your the prosecutor's going to do that, Kai. They're all on the uh, witness list. Crimes, murders in particular. Someone who finds the bodies and is related to the victims is always going to be looked at. Is that fair? That, that would be a fair statement, sir. 
And y'all were looking at Alex on the eight. Sled was, right? We yep. they could have turned it off. Yes, sir. They had access to the phone. They could have put it in and in airplane mode. We just haven't heard the witness yet that actually collected the phone. Label? Was he they could have put it in airplane mode. They could have turned it off. On the eight. We were looking at Alec being the one that found the the uh, deceased, uh, being the husband, the father, uh, in an attempt to get Mr. Alec out of that uh, immediate circle. And you've, you've described this investigative circle. So you draw a circle around potential uh, persons of interest. Is it a literal Alex circle or a metaphorical circle? We don't circle? draw a circle around any individual person. Uh, well, we work with the crime scene, which, which, which is what we consider the circle. Uh, and we work from our way inside out uh, in order to uh, find any potential suspects, identify <laughs> suspects, clear individuals. Uh, so we, we start with the, the small circle. Gloria, I think this is all going so to So when you started with the at small the time, circle, they didn't think he did although it. you don't draw it, yep. I mean, it's a sort of an investigative mental tool, who was the person in the small circle? We had Miss Maggie was in the crime scene, Paul was in the crime scene, and Alec was in the crime scene. Those are the only people at the crime and scene. You remember that on the morning of the 8th, there are media reports that Alec was a person of interest in the murder of his wife and son. They're remember that still trying to public knowledge. Get I try to avoid the media in any investigation because <laughs> I don't want to be influenced by anything that's said. <laughs> and the um fair good answer you recall sled putting out a press release on the morning of the end he's like i didn't, I didn't do not that be alarmed. i did not I do, do not that. recall any press release uh being played put out by sled he's like don't look at me never <clears throat> well the point being on the eight there was a circle and it was only around alec he was the only living and breathing person in the circle is that correct that is the only person that we could place in the circle at that time. And on the 8th, so was the only one at the crime scene. From what interviews with Alec, that he said he left Moselle at, shortly after 9 p.m., went to visit his mother in Almeida, stayed for a while, and came back. Sled, and you were aware of that. I like that this witness, fact. too. I am aware of that, yes, sir. He's been very facts, not fuckery. He's been giving facts and fuckery the whole time. He's like, it is Anybody what it is. Anybody sled ever on the morning of the 8th, hightail it over to Alameda and search the house for any evidence whatsoever. I, sure didn't I did not go to Alameda and search the house on the 8th. Are you aware of anyone ever going Where's to Alameda to search the house until sometime in September of 2021? There was a number of agents out working. I'm not sure what the other agents did. Sir. Wouldn't it have been a good idea to go to Alameda on the morning of the 8th, where the guy in the circle <clears throat> says he was, right? Is this the rush to I judgment go, we're proving? And I can't testify to what other agents Because I agree with you, Jim. It would have been a great idea. Well, you've been working this investigation. Uh, are you the lead case agent? No, sir, I'm not. Who's the lead case agent? David Owen. Right. <clears throat> now, every interview that Alec Murdoch gave, you participated in, right? I did, sir. So were you working? Was he there in the first know, interview the night of? Agent Owen's right-hand man in this investigation? I was assigned by the captain to assist at, uh, Agent Owens. Hmm. So... Aaron, I agree with you. If he had been a suspect, Aaron, they would have searched his house and one of his mom's developments house. As the investigation progressed, right? We had briefings uh, with each other on the case. Yes, sir. And you knew that at no point in time, in, in June, July, August, anyone went over to Almeida, searched the house, searched the property for any dirty clothes or any murder weapons. I know that I did not go and I'm not sure what the other agents. Uh, Very easy. In I know what I saw. Right I know what I did. Well, I know what I dealt with. If you with. went over there, if you had gone over there on the morning of the 8th, scoured the place and not find anything, that would sort of help nudge Alec outside this investigative circle, would it not? I can't testify to what if, sir. I, I, I did not go. 
we we try to stay away from the okay. what ifs because we don't know. On the eighth, um, you were asked to point out who's that person? Who's that person? Who's that person? That's Ronnie Crosby. He's a lawyer. That's Mark Ball. He's a lawyer. That's uh, Lee Cope. He's a lawyer. It was a lot of lawyers. Me? I do, sir. It was Alec. a veritable Alec wasn't a billable hour enough. of lawyers. On the 8th, those were his friends who came over to help him. Correct? A lot of lawyers. They, <laughs> they were given counsel to Alec as far as uh, what oh. we were doing. They were making phone calls to his counsel. Uh, that was the instruction which, which we gave. Oh. We were given. And they were assisting you, as you saw on the, the body cam, go through the evidence that you ended up seizing in the gun room, right? They pointed out some items. Uh, Can you imagine being in a position where the police are searching your house for weapons about. and your your homies are allowed to be like, Did you find that so maybe that one and you could your investigation? Maybe take that one. I can't even they imagine this. Our, our search within that gun room, no, sir. I can't even imagine. It is. It's a stack of lawyers. Now, you went back, I think, on June 13th. Is that correct? An invoice of lawyers, if you will. Yes, sir, we did. And and remind me, what was the purpose of the <coughs> search on June 13th? Uh, search on June 13th was uh, a follow-up search of the residents. I would have it's to absolutely the, the job of the defense to poke holes. To see yep, what, that's uh, our job. Items was being sought at that time. I'm still searching Are for the rest of the judgment. That you, you had to get a search warrant on the 13th? Search warrant or consent. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know what exact, everything that was being looked for at that time. It's a retainer of lawyers. Well, in fact, Charlie, that's Alan better. Gave consent. Anytime he was asked. He should have a sled, bottle up at the. If they could go on the property. Witness him. Right. My understanding is consent was obtained each time. And so. There was no search warrant on the 13th, was there, Agent Crone? I would have to, I would have to see our, our legal grounds for being there, so whether it was consent or search warrant. He's like, I'm not I sure. Not know. Right. And you don't need a search warrant if there's consent? Uh, no, sir, you do not. It's his understanding. And Because um, <clears throat> you don't. And in this in interview... Um, Dexy, exactly, like a murder of prison in voice of lawyers. You, you've <laughs> seen... You've on a binder of lawyers. Which yep. is a stack of average lawyers is definitely you know, less than Wood Daddy Stack. I agree. That's 300 blackout uh, clip. Is that right? It's a magazine with, with 300 <laughs> blackout ammunition. Yes, sir. I had an officer and tell me once, sweetheart, where clips go in your hair. Uh, collected from a black Ford F1 magazines going F150. guns. F150 on the property. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. So sir. it's very funny when Jim yeah, was like a clip. And then he's Testified like, it was found on the floorboard magazine? of the truck. Is that right? I didn't testify to where it was found. No, sir. Did you know where it was found? No, sir. Did just a black it? Ford F-150. Did you find it? No, sir. I did not. Oh, it was just provided to you? Yes, sir. Okay. In chain of custody. Now, the jury heard this um, videotape interview of Alec He is. He's just, again, June he's 10. facts, not fuckery. This is what so you expect from a senior special agent. Paul left. Everything everywhere. You remember hearing that statement? I do remember that. Yes, sir. And does this evidence support what Alec told you that Paul left everything everywhere? If you found a clip, three in a blackout, I can't <laughs> testify to who had the, sir? the magazine in the F. Excuse, excuse me, Jim. I don't know how many cases you you've done with guns, but it only takes not, once sir. to be told it's a magazine, and you go, "Oh shit, that's right." I, I would like did to be precise. Any analysis done of that? clip <laughs> the way it's packaged there does not appear that there's keep saying magazine on. keep saying there's magazine prints taken of that clip again sir the way it's packaged it does not appear that there was special agent keep saying magazine i'm not sure yeah, what a clip I, is I mr griffin another, this magazine doesn't uh, appear to be photographed clip that was seized from <laughs> the shelf in the glove keep correcting him i don't have that pulled up but i think it's 150 perhaps did um you remember Season another clip from the gun room. Yes, sir. There was another magazine with 300 blackout. He's Any gently taken from the clip. Seized he should have said, no, the there was room. no clip seized. I don't think so, sir. Only a magazine Any analysis done 
of the clip taken. Damn. The now it's bugging me. Gun room. The way I recall it being packaged yesterday, it would appear that there was no analysis before. Yet yeah, you brought it in court. You want this jury to have it? Why is that? He has no desire to have the jury have anything. He was asked about it. Calls first legal conclusion. For the objection. I believe that's outside the scope of this witness's purpose here as to why it's being offered in court. Calls for legal conclusion. Response to the objection. You're not asking his knowledge, not anything beyond his knowledge. You asked him why he wanted to introduce it. He doesn't give a fuck if it's introduced into evidence. He was asked Can a question. The question yeah. please, he sir. answered it. Could you say clip again? Clip. Do, do you know why you were asked to bring those clips here to court <laughs> and print, put them in evidence before this jury? I do not, sir. <laughs> I just answered the questions, man. <laughs> now, you also did a uh, search of the shooting range. I, and I couldn't. Going through my notes, and I can't, I don't have a date. Was that on the 13th or a different day? I'm not sure if it's the 13th or the 16th. 16th? I think you may be right. It, either way, again, that was a consent search, right? You didn't have a search warrant for that. We did get consent for that, yes, sir. And the jury saw the video. We're not going to belabor that again, but, but there was a, um, shooting house if you will with a chair and a, and a thing you would rest a gun on and we saw you picking up a lot of um, shell casings right yes sir and the shell casings you were picking up were the 300 blackout spent shell casings cartridges right that is correct sir but <laughs> there was a lot of a lot of brass in there that were not 300 blackout cartridges Right. There, there was additional brass that was not 300, okay. yes, sir. Now, we didn't get a good look. If you're sitting in that chair in that shooting house, downrange, do you remember what was on the other end of 100 yards or so away? Do you remember what, what was on the other end? I do not recall what's back. This is literally all I can think of is Dorinda going, uh, clip, of some clip. Sort. Chat, Are Judge Abbey says hello. A berm. Judge Abbey was supposed to be in trial. Judge Abbey's not safe, in trial. Right? You don't want to be so I was very excited rifle, to hear that. Just going down the, you know, without something to stop it. So there's a berm there to stop it. It right? was going into a wooded area, yes, sir. I bet there you was, law enforcement has mound. never said to Jim Griffin, look, sweetheart, clips go in your hair. There's a target and then dirt mound behind it. Maybe they should have. That's correct. Now, we, we saw you picking up brass. Who oh, this will drive Runkle crazy. Runkle's still in bed, dirt, I'm sure. Earthen dirt mound to find fired projectiles. I did not go down to the other end, no, sir. In fact, nobody at SLED went to that other end to dig out 300 <laughs> blackout fired projectiles, did they? I did not, and I don't know what the other agents did, no, sir. Judge well, Abbey's very busy. Agent no, Owen, right. you're going to briefings. You didn't hear at any point in time. Tilla, Jim Griffin we, uh, doesn't know that a magazine's not called a clip. We should have, or we did dig out projectiles. He might have at one mound. time. I never heard of anyone digging out the dirt mounds. So digging out brass from the dirt mound. If you had dug out projectiles from the dirt mound, that could have been sent to the ballistics lab at SLED and, and done a comparison to projectiles found at the crime scene. Correct. There would be a lot of elements that would uh, go into whether it could actually be looked at or not. Or you could certainly um, compare it to what was, I mean, you could take a 300 blackout, shoot it out of Buster's. Brass in this context right there, next to you and compare doesn't it to mean like that, the head police officer. That, that it's referencing done, different so, types of that, cases. Yes, right. But it wasn't, was it? I'm not sure what testing was done on Jumble of this particular rifle. Slew of to solicitors. To anything at the same Cluster of councilmen. I went with cloister of councilmen in my brain. Battalion of barristers, array of attorneys. Now, let's go to the June 10th interview. Like it. You, uh, you and Agent Owens interviewed Alec in... And Agent Owens, uh, we don't have everything they've done, Renee, but SUV, yes, sled, SUV, a visual timeline. 10th, right? I always made yes, visual timelines when I had complex timelines because um, I needed them. 
Brother John Marvin's. I'm a visual learner. Uh, I need hunting to lodge. See it in Barnville or somewhere. So it's a good by, point, right? Yes, sir. Not not yet. Not yet. Can we pay you to phone that lawyer? The, uh, no. He might. He might know it's a, a magazine. A lot of people were interviewed that day. And be saying clip right. to see if this witness will go there along with him. There was a number of interviews the going on. Because the witness corrected him twice, time, but that yes, was it. The witness just kind of kept answering. Again, it, that was consent, correct? The interviews were consensual. Yes, sir. And you interviewed. Make a point of lawyers as the well. The folks taken. being interviewed that day not only included Alec, but they included John Marvin, his brother, his son, Buster. Rhett. Or Rhett his other brother, is, Randy. Is, that is, is very annoyed. To my recollection, yes, sir. But Jim and Griffin told the jury he was a city boy. He might be doubling down on that by using improper June language. It's about, was it early afternoon, it seemed like? The timestamp should be on the video. It I don't might drive some of the. Um, it but it was might a little some of the bit like too. the cavalry coming, wasn't it? Well, there were a lot of cars that pulled up at one time, right? They were aware we were coming. They were, how many agents went? We took agents to interview each person that was there. You took two agents for each interview, right? You need I to. I think there was two agents for each interview. You're yesterday. supposed to have two for and each. Each agent came in their own car, right? They're coming from all across the county. I think I may have rode with Special Aid o Agent Owen. I'm, I'm not sure if we, each, if the others drove their own cars or not. Well, and so there's at least four. Could have been more than that cars right that was probably full cars yes sir and you okay you put each person randy john marvin buster and alec in a separate car all at one time a calvary like this is or, or a calvary like they are trying Pretty to find the murderer of one of the most one powerful families in the county agents and the police showed up and, and unlike they would show up for anybody else investigative technique so that one you of don't the want witnesses to be comparing notes and you want to interview them in separate places same time and to get what's fresh on their mind without being learning of what another witness has said. Right? We wanted to interview them individually, yes, sir. And 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 you said they knew that they were coming, <clears throat> but did you alert anyone that we're all gonna be coming in, you know, at least four cars and we're gonna interview you separately at, at the same time? There was some other things going that was going to take place while we were conducting the interviews. So it was arranged that they would all be at that location and we were going to meet them there and uh, conduct the interviews. Are you trying to tell me and that Alec Murdoch was afraid of four cars? He had more cars than that parked up at the, at the, yes, sir. Those are the, the things I'm talking about. Kennels. Now that, that wasn't told to Alec or John Marvin or Buster or Randy before they were terrified. The four cars really rolled in on the eighth at, so many cars at John Marvin's hunting lodge, right? It's my understanding that they knew we were coming and that we were going to request the uh, phone, interviews and phone DNA. analysis be done. You think someone when Sled would have told Alec ahead of time, told John Marvin ahead of time that, that we're, we're going when we get there, be sure not to erase anything off your phone because we're going to download <laughs> it. I didn't set the meeting up. I went Why with, would they tell them uh, that in advance? Agent Owen to uh, conduct the interview. So, but the and the first one of the first things you did in the interview was you and Agent Owen was. Why would they tell them Alec that in advance? Give over his phone so that it could be extracted. And he could right. say no. That was one of the first things we asked for. He had a lawyer with him was, was done in the car. A, another agent who came in a separate vehicle. I assume is that right? He's not an agent with the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, no sir. Okay. Uh, he was investigator with uh, 14 Circuit Solicitor's Office. That's my understanding of his job title, yes, sir. And that would be Investigator Hightower. Is that who that did that? That is my understanding, yes, sir. And and during the uh, interview, you also at the end of the interview, you got a buckle swab from Alec, right? I did, sir. And you got a buckle swab from not you, but I see Alita and Rob in the chat. Hello, lawyers. Gave buckle swabs meaning John Marvin, Randy, Buster, and Al, correct? I know that Alec, we uh, secured a, a buckle Clip from versus magazine. Alec. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there was one collected from Buster. I'm not sure about John Marvin and Randy. 
apparently. Now, yesterday, the the law um, showed up with a fleet to of cars. The entire video interview with Alec, and it ran for almost an hour. To the law we are on but cross examination. Sat on the stand uh, and, and heard that right. Good. Yes, Let's talk about the interview. And at various points in time, you were asked, "What did he just tell you?" Good. Did he just tell you. Good. This? You remember Good. That? I do, sir. And then you get to one point in the interview where you're asked, um, this sounds a lot better what did now. you just say after you said it must be tormenting? That's and not what you the... testified that Alex said on the video captured by audio that it was so bad, I did him so bad. That's what you testified to yesterday. Yes, sir. That is what I testified to. Now, are you 100% confident that Alex said, I did him so bad? There we go. Rather than they One did hour him so in. bad? I'm 100% confident in what I heard and I interpreted him as saying. Not relying on the video. But you would agree that this what I heard hear at the, the same time. thing you heard on June the 10th by, by playing what was captured on the body cam. Or the, or the recording equipment in Agent Owen's car, right? Yes, sir. Now, when you heard what you said, you're confident what you heard, that he said, mm -hmm. I did him so bad, um, what did you do in response to that? Yes, there's the I question. I made a mental note of, on it, uh, of it. Again, we were still in the early stages of investigation it was more of an information gathering from mr alec uh, and we did not have information at that point to my opinion to challenge mr alec on any of his statements couldn't challenge him on his statements not couldn't challenge the defendant couldn't challenge mr alec so on his statements alec murdoch was the one and only in this circle on June the 10th. You're in the car with him. This is getting to, to your testimony. Why he the says, fuck didn't you arrest I him? I did him so bad. Why didn't you arrest him? That is what I understood him to say. Yes, sir. And yet you just said you took a mental note of it. Yep. Yes, sir. I did. I mean, if the guy in the middle of the circle, the only one in the circle says, I did him so bad. Don't you arrest him? Isn't that a significant statement if he actually said that? Definitely something we would follow up with. That's a very careful question, a very you never well done up question. With it, did you? There was a third interview conducted with Mr. Alex. There was a third interview. There was a third interview conducted on August the 11th, 2021, right? I don't recall the exact date. We hear about it, but you were there, <laughs> right? Yes, sir, I was. And tell the jury if you ask Alec Murdoch on August the 11th, 2021. What did you mean back on June 10th when oh, no, you not. said, no, no, they're not I gonna, did him so bad? No, they're not going to give him a chance didn't to explain. make it to that point, sir. Why? We didn't make it to that point. Why not? In fact, back on what? June 10th, after you had this, uh, what, what you heard him say, I did him so bad, you went on to talk about Funeral arrangements, whether they're going to be public or private. Isn't that yep. right? There was questions concerning funeral arrangements, yes, sir. And Agent Owen says, well, Alex said he's trying to make arrangements so it wouldn't be, you know, a lot of media there or any media there. And, you know, That's the guy fair. who just said, I did him so bad. I mean, not enough to arrest him and hold him. That was, they don't deserve to be there. You recall that? Repeat that again, sir. You recall you Agent mind. Owen saying in your presence to Alec, the media did not deserve to be at Maggie and Paul's funeral. I do recall Agent Owen saying something about the media not being there. Yes, sir. And that was after, according to you, he said, I did him so bad. These are apples yes, and oranges. Did you consider that to be some sort of confession on June the 10th? Again, I it was something that we were definitely going to follow up on. Yes, sir. Excited utter utterance? Something we were going to follow up on.
If they had arrested him on Getting that, he would have been out in moments. Um, <clears throat> Shoot. Excuse me. Did you review a transcript that was prepared He's? by SLED of that interview? Of That's a good question. No, sir. I've never seen a transcript that was prepared for that. And that's Are good prep on the prosecution's part. No, sir. I'm not. Are you hearing that the first time? Yes, sir. I am. That's good prosecution prep. You don't introduce anything to your well, witnesses. You back on June 10th. Why, why did other you than ask their him memory. right then and there when he said, I did him so bad? That's good prosecutorial you work. You, what, what These are good defense that? questions. Again, it was early in the investigation. Uh, it was more of this an witness is doing a good information job. gathering. Uh, interview. They were like noted. Call it an interview with Mr. Noted. Uh, and we did not at that particular time in the investigation. We did not have evidence to challenge anything that Mr. Allen would have told us. This has been it was decided that we would not. A very good you know, witness. That at that time. A very good witness. I mean, a I'm good cross examination and a good why direct. Didn't you challenge him. My question is, why didn't you ask for clarification? Like, what are you talking about? You didn't <laughs> it's not how policing works, sir. <laughs> Asking for clarification of I did him so bad gives him a chance to explain uh, would ultimately be a challenge of what he said. They didn't have the information so to challenge him. What, are the, what were the things going through your mind when you heard or misheard I did him so bad? Very I wasn't a good careful dad. question. I, I spoiled him or I killed him. Very good question what by Jim Griffin. Your mental note? Good there question. was a mental note that it was definitely something that we needed to follow up on. And, and ask at a later time. Did you hear how he said heard or misheard? The defense has been excellent at doing that. The defense has said. Now, from the video, it, it appears shooter, you're shooters. taking some notes. They've been very good. Yes, sir. Did you take notes? I, I was writing specific now, stuff now, You now. mentioned you made a mental note of <clears throat> this, what you heard or misheard. I did him so bad. But did you make a written note of him saying that? I don't recall if I wrote it or not, sir. So it's possible. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. The guy it. who's now been charged with murder on June tenth in the interview, the father, the only one in the circle. He was. He said, "I did him so bad." Cats and boys. You can't tell the jury you even wrote it down on a piece of paper. I don't recall if I actually made a physical note of it or not, sir. No. I'm gonna pull down the curtain. He made a Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. I'm gonna play that clip from State's Exhibit. 243, which is in evidence. I want you to listen again with the jury. Oh, we're going through it again. Good. Hang, hang on, y'all. They're going through very carefully heard or misheard. Jim Griffin has done a great job of trying to introduce that doubt. Did you hear or mishear? And he said, I'm not basing it off the audio. I'm basing it on my remembering from being in the car. I remembered it. And the chat brought up a great point. Zoe said, why would you write it down if it's recorded? That's a great point. Uh, All right, let's, Fred, get off the camera, let's play my it. guy. Please, Doug. Exhibit. Oh. Uh, code Fred. Code up. Fred. Fred. It's, it's tough. <laughs> it was just so bad. It did it so bad. I still hear I. All right. Back it up and play it in real time again, Doug. Real time. Oh, they're going to slow it down. That might get objected to. <laughs> Are not, not easy. I know it's hard. Um, and sitting here talking today is, is tough. It's just so bad. They did it so bad. I hear it's just so bad. I did it so bad. Did you hear now? They or I? I will still testify that my hearing, I hear I. Your Honor, we'd like to play it again at one third speed. No. To slow it down. It's just no. the same. Thank you. One third speed. Yep. It manipulates the evidence. Foundation late for who's manipulating it, how it's being manipulated. Yep. Uh, I think uh, obviously we have it in real time, but there would have to be some additional. Pixels. Uh, My cat is wiggling the camera. At one third speed. Uh, the court is allowing it. I'm going to gain this up a little bit. And sitting talking today is, is tough. <laughs> it's just so bad. It's so bad. I 
hear I. I hear I. Did you hear they then? No, no. sir, I did not. Okay. Oh, the judge allowed it. You would agree the jury gets to decide what he what he said on that tape. Calls That's the best conclusion. evidence. The I agree that they get to hear the tape and make their own mind up as to what he said. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all I have on that. Now, the prosecution I said never that they could have slowed that down. You said you weren't sure, but but there was another interview with Alec Murdoch okay, now came to uh, fucking hell. the Sled Low Country office, and you and Agent Owen sat down and interviewed him. Correct. That is correct. Now, um, he said he was on, done. On all these interviews that were conducted and that have we been played somewhat or body cam conversations, except for Ella, when you're doing them, do you tell the person that you're interviewing, hey, I'm going to turn the, the audio recorder on? You're now being recorded. Is that standard operating procedure? We have to we see the beginning don't of the tape. Advise that we're recording. No, okay. If and you're you talking to the police, Ella, it's probably being recorded. Him. On any of the interviews just an that FYI. you conducted with Agent Owen, correct? I never advised that anyone that I was being uh, that they were being recorded. And <clears throat> and this meeting that you had, were you aware that Alec was asking for the meeting so that he could get an update on whether you made any progress in the investigation of the murder of his wife and son? I was aware that Alec had uh, requested a meeting to uh, raise some questions as to what was going on. I mean, he wanted information as to what was going on, right? That's my understanding, yes, sir. <clears throat> but y'all had other plans for that meeting, correct? <clears throat> no, sir. I'm not going to say we had other plans for that meeting. It was an interview. Yeah, they wanted to yeah. chat. I mean, he came there and not chitty chitty chat chat. He didn't go to that meeting thinking, I'm going to be interviewed. To your knowledge, did he? How did objection calls for speculation? I don't, I don't know what his thinking was. He knew he was coming there to meet with myself and Agent Owen. Oh. And during that interview, he's a lawyer. Much, you made made it known to him. He's a former that, prosecutor. Well, Are we I mean, surprised? Yeah, point blank. Did you kill your wife and son? Oh, he was asked that. Oh. Oh. That's new information. And that's probably when he walked out. He made it. That's speculation. That well, let, let me ask you, at that point in time, was he full, full bore suspect in your murder investigation? What's a full bore? He mean? was still a person of interest. Uh, there was some questions that we had regarding information that we had obtained that only he could answer. And he had, still he a person of interest. The questions that you asked. It's August 11th. Uh, yes, sir. And then at the end of that interview, um, he asked you to meet with Maggie's mom and dad, Mr. and Ms. Branstadter, and her family, correct? I think that was the end of the second interview. That not the third. It was in the second interview. Right. Well, shortly after that, August. Casey Cat, yes, this is exactly <laughs> as the dress after blue that or third white. interview with, with Alec. Or gold or whatever. Which we'll get the date in the record eventually. I want to see the video too. I want to see the mouth. Agent Owen I want to see went him talk. and met with Maggie's mom and dad, and sister and brother-in-law, and nieces, correct? That is correct. And part of that interview, um, well, that interview was recorded, right? I can't the do a poll just yet. It's going to take me a minute Brad Brad Shutters. Shutters. to yes, get in there and do that. Uh, audio recorded. Did you tell them you're recording? We did not. I'm flying solo for a minute. And I don't think. I, I, I did not tell them. If I can't start a poll from streaming, it's a whole part time. of the interview was part of the interview was conducted as part of your investigation. They just replayed to get information that to statement. assist you and next steps, correct? Uh, the, the interview was a combination interview. It was to share information then and also to gather information concerning family dynamics, yes, sir. In that interview, you and or uh, <clears throat> Agent Owen told the Branstadters and the Proctors that, that He's Alec very... is in this circle of investigation. This is hearsay. Right? It was no secret that Alec was in that circle at that point. No, sir. He was at the murder and, scene. And that 
you also told him he's the only one that you've identified in the circle. Are we going to hear that? I don't recall saying he's the only one in that circle. So this is Maggie's family. Well, did you identify for the branch debtors, the proctors, any other people in the circle? They particularly ask about Alex, so I don't re I don't recall giving them any other names. That was Maggie's uh, family asked that. if the police thought that in Alex early did it. August of 2021, was there anybody oh. else in the circle that your sled was focused on? Again, hmm. sir, at that particular date, I'm not sure who all was still within that circle. That's what I took away from that. I don't know if I would have introduced that During as a defense interview, attorney. Maggie's mother. Ms. I don't know if Brandstetter, I was a defense attorney if I would father, introduce Mr. Kerry that the in-laws were asking if he did it. Her sister, Marion Proctor, and brother-in-law, Bart, and their children described for y'all their observations of Alex's relationship with Maggie and Paul, correct? My takeaway. From their observation of their relationship, yes, sir. How is this helping the defense? And that was, you were asking that uh, as part of your investigative tool. And getting yes, sir, that's correct. Because Alex said it was perfect. And they reported to you that Alec had a loving relationship with Maggie and Paul, correct? Rule 801 and 802. It's hearsay. Pardon? Objection, Rule 801 and 802. It's not being offered for the matter asserted, Your Honors, what he did in response to that. Objection sustained. Yeah, I don't think it's being offered in response. They're trying to introduce the question. The shit's already out of the horse. The Were question's you given been asked. information in, in that interview? Uh, did they identify other people? who had warned Maggie that word on the street in Hampton that there was some risk to her family's safety resulting from the boating accident. I don't recall any specific information concerning uh, warning of uh, threats of, of any nature. No, sir, I don't, I don't recall that. <laughs> you don't hmm. recall being provided the name Barbara Mixon? I do recall being provided names of those that may have information but as far as specific Context information i do not recall matters. any specific information that was shared by the branch matters any, you know whether Ms. Mixon was ever interviewed following your meeting with the branch status i know i never interviewed Ms. Mixon. were you given information about uh ms kena trahern of a similar nature okay i never interviewed Ms. trahern if her name was given no sir one minute, Your Honor, man. Check to see what I left. Chad, may I check to see what I forgot to ask? He's trying to end run getting Maggie's family's statements in there. But what I heard from the statement he did get in was that Maggie's family asked the police about Alec. So in my mind, I, it sounds like Maggie's family asked if they could suspect <coughs> Alec. That's what I thought. That's a very interesting thing to know, especially knowing the Maggie's family's not there. Now, this jury's not going to know that. They shouldn't know who the family members are. They can probably figure out who Buster is because he looks just like his dad and his hair is as bright as anything. I mean, if there's a a great color of red, Buster's hair is pretty pretty glorious. But the jury's not going to miss him in the front row. Um, Alex's sister, I think, looks a bit like him. Same with the brother they're going to see testify later. So it's going to be very obvious to them or it might not be very obvious to them that Maggie's family is not in court. We're going to answer a few questions. Um, okay. Oh, re oh did you see Creighton jump out of his seat? Uh, Special Agent Croft. Like a uh, waterfowl. He's when like, you went back or you went and searched that house. Oh, Creighton, slow down, my uh, guy. You go so fast time. when you start. Is that correct? That is Ooh. correct. Sir. And to your knowledge, when other agents walk through the house with the family members, and this is on this June man 8, is out of the gate so fast. They were looking for firearms. Is that correct? That is my understanding, yes, sir. Damn. You were asked about these weapons that you see that are put into evidence, and you were looking for any potential. I got uh, out of breath listening to Creighton's rounds consistent with those that we Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> Don't we'll lead the witness. It's a redirect. Uh, you can't lead. Redirect doesn't mean you get to lead, Creighton. <laughs> That's not how it works. What is the point? It's a redirect, Your Honor. That's not the answer. As much evidence as you can when you have that opportunity. What are you trying to do there? We were trying to gather as much evidence that could be tested as potential weapons uh, for the scene to this be able to include up. or to exclude. Uh, Your mom Alex said he's like a racehorse weapons. waiting for his turn. That's exactly what it is. He's out of the gates. He's like, go, 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 Responsible go, go. for the murder. You were asked a little bit about 
this right here, and uh, this was uh, June of 2021, correct? That is correct, yes, sir. Had COVID had any effect generally on the availability of ammunition? I'm sorry? Had COVID had any effect generally on the availability of ammunition? Yes, sir. And tell the jury what, if any, effect that was. Ammunition was difficult to get during that time. Uh, like toilet paper. Because of the, of the uh, shutdowns during COVID. All right, I'm putting Did up a phone. Did you find a lot of ammunition uh, inside the defendant's <laughs> residence? There was quite a bit of ammunition. Did inside. you find a lot of different types of ammunition inside the defendant's residence? And yes, sir, we did. Did you find a lot of S and B three hundred blackout in the defendant's residence? That was mostly what we found. Um, you were asked about the commonality of various rounds blackout through others, and you mentioned three hundred eight, two two three, and five five like six. Can you tell the jury a little bit about? those rounds and why they tend to be a, a bit more common as you testified to, please. I, I'm sorry, can you, you mind repeating? Yeah, sure. You yeah. testified. Jack's beyond the scope. I didn't ask anything about two, two threes and whatever he said. Oh, you asked? He asked about the common alley of blackout. He did. And he answered about those. Yes, yes you did. I you to repeat the question. I would like to hear it as well. Yes, sir. Yes, we are in regret. You were asked earlier about the commonality of blackout and you mentioned it was not as common as 308 and two, 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 three, three. five, five, six. He did I was asking that. you to explain a little bit about those calibers and why they are more common. That's okay. fair. Uh, and the judge two, just two, ruled three is, ruled. is a very common round. It's uh, utilized in, in law enforcement. Y'all don't five, forget six. to do the like, you subscribe to YouTube things. law enforcement and also within the military. I appreciate uh, it. Prior to COVID, it was uh, easily found, uh, fairly Fairly cheap ammunition to to go out and shoot as far as rifle ammunition goes. 308 is a, a hunting rifle. Just BKZ which can said be um, for, 20 for minutes is not a while while like visiting anything like other than a restroom. Uh, 308 is also a common Might be particularly true in the South. Uh, within law enforcement and the, and the military. I think side. my mother would be offended by a 20 uh, minute it's visit. It's a very common round. 300, on the other hand, is. Hello, Matt Bond. It's just at that particular time, 300 oh, we'll uh, get to that at uh, rounds were just, our time. weapons were just not that common. How many criminal investigations have you worked where 300 blackout was the That's a good round? question. I have none. But the, none. how many investigations none. have you done is what we need. Have you done three? You were asked earlier about. Was that yesterday? It might have been yesterday. And what has been uh, admitted into evidence is States 214. And, he has an experience. Uh, there are actually, are there multiple exhibits in that particular bag that was not open? Yes, sure it is. Right. And. Aside from the boxes, Katie, what I think that's very possible. Is in that particular bag, it is a what appears to be a credit card receipt uh, with one Ooh. particular item circle. Explain. Yeah, item circle with what? Gucci. Gucci. Why is this important, Creighton? <clears throat> you're showing the puzzle pieces, but not the front of the box, my guy. Why is the Gucci receipt important at all? Like, how is it relevant? What the fuck is up with the Gucci receipt? <clears throat> I've got to make a note that I have questions because I'll forget by the end of the day. Something else will happen. Is it for the date? Is it because the amount is circled? Why, 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 why? So, I got questions. It might go to the money issues. I don't know. I don't think they will get into to the death of Gloria Satterfield um, much in this case. But yes, the 911 call was not uh, compassionate. We did an other or both about, option. That makes it too easy. About the, uh, what the lab report found. And where your experience is in, is in general firearms knowledge, is that correct? That is correct, yes, Are sir. you a firearm marks and tool mark examiner? No, sir, I'm not. Is it your role to do that specific analysis? Creighton, you it don't not, even sir. need to is bother. That for others to do? That is, uh, that don't is Don't let the correct, defense sir. pull you I'll into their game, Creighton. Later. It's a losing game. That is correct, sir. That's a losing game. <clears throat> you try your case and don't worry about much of what the defense does. Don't get pulled into responding to everything they do. You asked a number of questions do. about the various loads in some of these shotguns. Did you find weapons that had mixed loads, that had different types of ammunition? This is important. Yes, sir, I did. The mixed load sounds like a subsection of movies. 
of a certain kind to me. We asked a couple but, of questions about uh, I, the board that Mr. Harpootlian put in evidence today. You recall those? Yes, sir, I do. Are you aware that both victims had stippling on them from their gunshot injuries? Yes, sir, I am. That and what is stippling? Stippling is, is uh, a, a powder burn pattern, which is left on an individual uh, due to a close range. Mixed shot. load so is going on the bingo shot. board. That is correct. Right. You were asked some questions about the location of chat. I know you're with me. <laughs> when they're ejected out of the weapon. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I was. Are there a number of factors that go into where a, a shell casing might actually land? Yes, sir, it is. Can people move? I'm sorry, sir. Do people move? People can move, yes, sir. Ashley said mixed load is a washing machine setting, obviously. You are asked a couple of questions about the cell phone and whether or not it was put in the Faraday bag. Do you know if that phone was put in airplane mode? I think it was, yes, sir. You've been asked a number of questions about the defendant and the investigation. Uh, do you recall during the course of the interview on June 10th, uh, did Agent Owen mention that uh, y'all had talked to 100 people at that point? I do. Yes, sir. All right. And was the investigation just fo focused on Alec Murdoch or was it focused on anyone and everyone it could focus on? It was absolutely not just focused on Alex Murdoch. Did in that particular interview, did uh Agent Owen mentioned uh, victim advocates or, or any sort of grief counseling to Alec Murdoch. Is that correct? Yes, sir, he did. When you're that early in an interview and you are interviewing someone who might be in the circle, as Mr. Griffin des uh, describes <laughs> it, uh, are you trying to keep your ears open? Yes, sir, I am. Are you trying to keep the lines of communication open? Yes, sir, I this am. Are you going to confront somebody that early on, or are you going to try to keep the yeah, dialogue At this going? point, you object to leading to the leading. I'll lead the witness. What is your goal yeah. when you're that early he in the investigation? He just slipped right into leading. witnesses or potential subjects. Again, based on what we had in this particular Courtney, case. Courtney, you get to make it as NSFW as you desire. More of an information gathering type of interview. I just say the thing. It wasn't uh, an interrogation by no means. You were asked about whether or not Anna, it's spelled Alex, but he pronounces it projectiles out of Alec, the like e. of dirt. and the attorneys uh, pronounce it all different ways. Were you ways. aware that there were 300 blackout cases found around Maggie's body at the scene? Yes, I was. And were your, was it, what was your goal is finding similar evidence in other parts of the property? Similar casings uh, to the uh, shell casings that were located at Miss Maggie's body. Did you know that casings can be compared to casings which has been recovered already at the murder scene? Yes, sir, I did. Did you find cases outside of the side door? Yes, sir, I did. 300 blackout cases? All this testimony yes, from sir, yesterday. Did. did you find 300 blackout cases at the range sir, across the street? Yes, sir, I Trust did. Trust this jury. You don't need to reassert again and again and again. It's fine. They know the casings are going to get matched. You were asked about interviewing a number of witnesses on that day on June the 10th. Is that right? Yes, sir. Is it common standard operating procedure to interview witnesses separately? Yes, sir. Is there anything different or unusual about that being done? No, sir, it's not. Would you do that in any case? Yes, sir, I would. The June 10th interview with Alan Murdoch, who all was in that car? It was myself. I want to know about the Special August Agent 11th Owen, interview because it sounds Mr. like that's Alec where the team is. And uh, counsel. Jim Griffin was there. That is correct. Jim His Griffin. lawyer was there. Jim Griffin was in correct. the car. Remind the jury what Alec Murdoch did for a living. He was a trial lawyer and a prosecutor for the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office. Was that interview aggressive in any way? Not at all, <laughs> sir. Stop trying to disprove it. Just let the jury think the defense is full of it. Just leave it be because they're going to think you're full of it and some of it. So let the just you don't need to spell it out to the jury in our until argument. It's fine. But Jim Griffin was there, which is also interesting to know. I 
I want to see that video. You asked a number of questions about <laughs> various firearms evidence that was seized in this particular case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Did you personally seize every single piece of evidence, firearms related evidence in this case? Not personally, no, sir. And just it's a just big what the SOP is. When you have multiple agents working a scene and they find evidence, what do they do with it? They generally uh, will mark it or, or locate it. And one particular person actually does the collection to package uh, and, and make sure that it gets to our lab. All right. And there could be multiple individuals doing that collection? Yes, sir. And then where does it go from there? What happens to sync it all back together? It's generally packaged. Uh, this is fair. I don't think they've covered this yet. Turn over to a crime scene or, or, or uh, an analyst uh, at our lab. Uh, chain of custody is, is, is provided uh, to track that particular piece of evidence as to where it went. Are efforts made by those collecting it to avoid tampering with the evidence? Absolutely. I mean, the evidence tampering might the not be the right word there. Preserve it as much as possible in its form? Yes, sir. Is that standard operating procedure for all of SLED? Yes, sir. They get to check. Somebody else gets to tell them um, if they missed questions. I think, I, look, having co counsel is nice. But um, that's fair. Beg the court's indulgence a moment to locate an evidence. Kelly, they're all taking a stretch break while the prosecution looks for a, an exhibit. Why are we not seeing the interview? The interviews, none of the evidence is played on live television. It's available for the media after. And since I am here and not there, we're just going to have to wait until somebody has it. So um, somebody asked, did I have co-counsel during trial? I only had another attorney on a trial in one trial um, that was a capital homicide case. I was co-counsel in that trial um, with a lead attorney. But um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's nice. It's a nice thing to have, but it's, it's rare, uh, but I wouldn't, I would expect that you would have multiple, um, multiple attorneys on a double homicide, high profile case with a high profile family. The defense team has two plus tables full of attorneys. I hate that they kill the audio when they're taking breaks and people stand up. It really just annoys the crap out of me. I want to hear what it says. Chelsea said, <laughs> Respectfully stalking you since Depp be heard. I'm on the internet all the time. It's not stalking if you're just like hanging out on the YouTubes. By the way, if you are hanging out on the YouTubes, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you. It actually helps. Uh, subscriber numbers on YouTube vary in how much they matter, but it is starting to shift as YouTube gets a little squirrely about this a Gonzalez versus Google case. So we'll just thank you for subscribing. It helps. Turn on the bell. It helps. Um, Matt Bond said that was a beautiful moment at 839 this morning. Was it me yelling at the cats for being ridiculous? Could the thank you bite them, um, on appeal if he is found guilty? No, them thanking the court for their courtesy, I think was more of a move for the media. I, I, and that's me being really cynical about it because they didn't have to say that on the record. They could have said that at a break. They wanted to say that. Um, and I'm sure the court staff has been, Wonderful. Unless there is something yesterday that happened where um, they were asking the court staff for quite a lot. Question, why is Buster permitted to be in court if he's on the witness list? I have not seen that they've excluded witness in this case. I've not seen, um, I've not seen anybody bring it up. Also, as the, he's the survivor, surviving family member of the two victims in this case. So he has some rights under victim impact laws as well. But I have not seen them try to exclude witnesses. There's a number of witnesses there um, that are here. So Amber said, made my husband blind listen and he heard they did him so bad. Shout out to my sister and I, uh, who I turned into a lawner, Gina. Shout out to Amber's sister, Gina. Uh, coming in from Kansas, have a steering column to replace and about 50 recalls to do. That Sounds delightful. Good luck with all of that. Good morning from Rhode Island. Just dropped off my service pup for grooming and I'm here with coffee. Happy grooming. My partner Lola is ill. Well, I hope Lola feels better um, very soon. 
this case is just so full on. Love your coverage. Thank you. Tuning in at 1 a.m. local time from Adelaide, South Australia. Poot and beans. I just heard apple bottom. Jeans, boots with the fur. That's what I heard. I heard apple bottom. What's happening? Um, definitely a law nerd in trading. Uh, Marsha, if you're here, you're a law nerd. It's fine. This might be the black and blue dress of 20, right, 2023. Yes, so far it is. It evidence. absolutely is. And My cat wants to thank you for the jump start you, uh, to passing his LSAT. Very wise cat. Where that was recovered. It's uh, one unfired shot shell from a state of box on bookshelf and gun room head stamped winchester 12 gauge can i uh, ask you wait to gucci sells blackout ammo that's got to be a joke janet that's a joke right we're joking please. like that's you not the ammo, please, please. gucci doesn't really sell ammo right thank you chat for singing i'm here for it i know it's hard with slow mode but there's like twenty five thousand of y'all so slow mode is kind of needed otherwise it gets real crazy but thank you all for singing along i appreciate it Tell me, uh, can you describe that? Uh, what that is to the jury, please? It's a 12-gauge uh, shotgun shell, head stamp, Winchester 12-gauge. Right. Sammy. And does the, uh, the plastic part of the shell have any identifying information? It's got dry lock. Uh, oh. Three-inch number two. There's the dry lock. Hold that real quick. I really want him to say, I want him to pull up one of the magazines and be like, is this a magazine? Yes. So it's not a clip? No. Wait, Gucci really actually sells ammo? <gasps> what? You were just, uh, saying. I have so many questions. I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Yes, sir. It, it appears to be yes, sir. That's uh, it declares on it. You can't hardly see it. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm going to All go right. down a rabbit hole. Put that just back in that. Back for me, please. Um, so there's that dry lock. We are on redirect, which means the prosecution right, is getting to been marked and entered into evidence, getting back around to it. And if you could, first of all, uh, publish again what the crime scene notes say. Y'all, we have a whole crime. rabbit hole about Gucci. One unfired now. shot shell from a state box on a uh, bookshelf and gun room head stamped Winchester 12. Gauge. Gucci's going to be like, why is everyone concerned about our ammo all, right, all of a sudden? Could, please, again, carefully nope. open that. Back no chat and uh, pull out what's inside. And chat, we're not injury. we're not starting a rumor that they were killed with Gucci ammo. It's just a point of interest at this point because there was a Gucci, there was a Gucci um so black and colored uh, Winchester 12 gauge. Uh, on the side, the writing is dry lock three inch number two. This is a very good point. He should have started with this when he started his redirect. This is the dry lock ammo. This is the uh, unfired the def shell that you were just describing. The, the defense crime? said. Yes, sir, it is. The defense said Paul Murdoch was killed with dry lock ammo, but you didn't find any dry lock ammo on the property. And Creighton was like, actually, here's the dry lock ammo that we recovered on the property. So it might have yeah, been loaded written. into weapons. There might not have been a box of it, around. but there was, in fact, uh, dry lock. Dry lock ammo. Number two. So the prosecution was like, boom. So they're going, now because the defense said, you didn't find any dry lock on the property, the prosecution's like, oh yeah? How about now? How about now? Again, they're going to go through each and every one. Crime scene notes say on that, please. Uh, one on fire. Wait, does Gucci sell arrows too? I'm more of an archer. I'm more of an archer. Does Gu does Gucci also sell archery supplies? On bookshelf in gun room, head stamp, Winchester 12 gauge. Right. Bookshelf carefully, uh, in the gun room. See what's inside and describe it for the jury, please. <laughs> I know this might feel like a gotcha moment for the prosecutor, but again, the defense is trying to. It's a poke 12 holes. gauge shotgun shell, Winchester. And the prosecution stamp. is now. Uh, dry lock, three inch. Uh, number two. Patching them up. Is it the same as the previous two? Yes, sir, it is. Can I hope? So. Chat, you guys are cracking me up. I love it. 
Gucci finds themselves trending on Twitter. <laughs> it isn't that Gucci. Well, I don't know which Gucci is on the receipt. They just said Gucci. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, and now we know. Uh, so we published those prompt scene notes, and then now we know. The same procedure, please. One <laughs> unfired shot shell from nightstand in Paul's room, head stamped Winchester 12 gauge. Paul had dry lock 12 gauge on his nightstand in the room in the hunting. Interesting. All right. Tell me what, describe it to the jury. <laughs> there really was... Winchester 12 gauge on the side is uh, got writing dry lock three inch number two. All right. There really was ammo literally Same everywhere. Time. Yes, sir. Wait, but does Gucci make like demi wispy, demi wispy uh, eyelashes that I can put on with my with my All right. with Lancome we'll mascara? I know Gucci actually makes mascara, but we'll show you what's been <clears> marked <throat> as Exhibit One Hundred and Fifty into evidence. State's Exhibit One Hundred and Fifty, and again, if you can as best you can, uh, tell the jury the crime scene notes on that exhibit. It's. Uh, one, and I can read shell head stamp 12 gauge found from Red Bend on workshop bench. The state's exhibit tag is over the right. Gotcha. On workshop bench, correct? Yes, sir. All right. If you would uh, carefully open that and then describe what you find to the jury. I mean, I'm just not the lash lighting. Look, man, I exist on the so internet. Red in color, federal 12 gauge. Uh, shotgun shell uh, on the side is federal premium double off buck three inch mag at the end of the day millimeter maximum of 1050 buck. of federal buckshot double homicide federal trial buckshot yes sir. that is gruesome and horribly sad yes sir i do like to escape in a little bit of uh internet drama and right now lashgate is giving uh, 2016 dramageddon on the uh, workbench from the I'm, red, I'm, I'm red bin on the workbench. Oh, I could make a lot of comments about whether Chanel know, makes ammo, out, but I don't know if they actually do. You can't read it on there, sir. All right. I'll just walk it back to you. All right, if you could secure that back. <clears throat> Wait, what if Gucci made a yodeling pickle and a yodeling goat? Gucci, we need a Gucci yodeling goat or a yodeling pickle. Right. I'm going to show you now what's been marked as stage 144. Let's do the same for I've been gifting Tell Gucci clips but for my hair. That <laughs> Arlo, that's very play. clever. One unfired shot shell head stamp, 12 gauge federal from Red Ben on workshop bench. If you could carefully open it and describe to the jury what you found. They're going to go through every single, every single. They're going to go through every single one. It's a red and color federal 12 gauge. Uh, writing on the side is federal premium double off buckshot mag, uh, double off buck three inch magnum. Is that for waterfowl or not? I don't know these things. Can you explain if it's the dry lock one or not the dry lock one? Like, that's all I'm worried about right now. Um, Gucci mascara is the best luxury mascara. Good to know. I always end up buying makeup during trial. Um, Deb V heard I ended up buying a lot of makeup because I was yeah, like, oh. Secure that back for me, please. I need to try that concealer. Still wear it. Still love it. Um, Gucci doesn't actually sell guns and ammo in this context. Gucci means gold-plated or chrome-plated, just fancified guns and ammo. I don't know. The chat seems to say that Gucci actually has ammo. Would, I haven't Googled yet. <laughs> Good. Read what the crime scene notes say. One unfired shot shell, head stamp, 12-gauge federal from Red Bend on workshop bench. Gucci's going to start putting their uh, Gucci's going to start putting their lipsticks and bullets and sell those at Sephora. It's a uh, red in color, 12 gauge, 
federal shotgun shell stamped on the side, federal premium, double alt buck, three inch magnum. Red in color matters because that's the type of shotgun casing shell. Yes, sir, it is. That was ejected. Federal buck shot, correct? That is correct. All right. Um, Y'all take a minute to do the poll. When this witness is done, we're going to end the poll. And we'll do one more. We've got States Exhibit 148. You could again tell the jury what the crime scene notes and talk about its location, please. It says one unfired shot shell head Kyrie, stamp, why are we 12 going gauge back federal this? from Red Ben on workshop bench. Because the, uh, the defense brought it up, what's inside? trying to indicate that there was no ammo like the ammo that shot Paul Murdoch on this property. And so now the prosecution is like, it's a oh, red yeah? in color, federal one, 12 and gauge. This one, and this one. Uh, shotgun and this shell. One, and this one. Uh, on and so now we're right here. This to federal go premium, every double off, single, up, three inch mag. Freaking three inch mag. One. Same as the previous three. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Sprilly Cat, my law degree got confirmed today, taking a break from bar prep to listen. You are such an inspiration. Congratulations. We're. Let the mods know, Sprilly Cat, so I can see it because we've got like 26,000 people in here. What your celebration is. Are we going to yodeling pickle? Are we going to yodeling goat? Congratulations. Pick a celebration. We'll do something. Right. We'll, we'll festively celebrate in a law nerd way. More draw locks? Yes, sir. More draw locks. Four buck shot. Uh, yes, sir. The draw locks are what? Brand. Uh, they're black in color. They are just they are never going to end. They're going to go through every Winchester. single one. And the buckshots are what? Uh, federal. So the dry locks are Winchester and the buckshots federal. I don't know if I need just to know a that. More questions for you. You were asked this probably whether feels or not really tedious you took to the down jury. any notes at any point in the interview or at a particular point in the interview. Yes, sir. You made them. The interview is being recorded. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Creighton, are you reading the chat, my guy? Interview? He was not, sir. Was that interview voluntary? It was, sir. Was that interview aggressive? It was not, sir. Let was the jury decide that present? for themselves. His law attorney was present, sir. And he's a lawyer, too. Or yes, was sir. a lawyer. Yes, sir. Creighton, you've made your point. <laughs> Yeah, you made your point. Further recross. You made briefly, point. Your Honor. Um, Do you see the witness's cross. face? He was like, yes. oh. Uh, <laughs> with regard to the injuries of Maggie, do you know how many bullet wounds she had that had stippling? I know at least one bullet wound had stippling. Yes, Just sir. one. That's all you No, know. he yes, said sir. at least. All right, and then. You've got to still be precise. On the June 10th, you. Agent, you all interviewed a hundred people or more, broad investigation. But did you have anybody else in the circle on June 10th besides Alec Murdoch? We had names of interest that we were interviewing, yes, sir. More than and then you were asked about projectiles versus they said uh, this wasn't a thorough investigation, cartridges. didn't they? More than 100 they, interviews, projectiles were found, 300 blackout projectiles were found in the a lot dog house and the dog bed i am aware of that now yes sir and that there's a 300 blackout projectile found in the dirt by the tire truck yes and? Sir. so there were projectiles that were found that's correct sir. yet you're out of the the range you don't look for projectiles right i was collecting the 300 blackout spent shell casings he knew what he was looking for gun room. Or not the gun room, I apologize, the shoot house. Now, now you showed a number of shot shells, buckshot, and apparently dry lock. What date were those seized? That's a good question. All of them? Which one? Looks like 9-13 of... 2021. Those were seized three months after the murders. It's a very good question. And the cross, the prosecution doesn't get, get back up. 
and talk about it. Hang on a second. Go through each one. He's trying to Nine, make sure. 13, 20, 21. He's trying to check when they were collected the versus date. tested to it's make sure that he's accurate, which so I June, appreciate. June, July, August, September. I mean, four months after the murders. That's correct, sir. And, he doesn't have and to. you know whether that. Chronically, but he doesn't secured? have to explain it. They just Isn't have to raise doubt. It had not been secured by and law. That's what he's doing. Anybody could have come in. You know, if any of that in front of you was on the property on June 7th or before. I can own it's it was there the day we collected it. It I, was there I, when I we got it. That other question. And yep. I understand you didn't collect any of that. Correct? No, sir. And you don't know where it was collected from other than what you're reading on the envelope. Right. Correct. That should be correct. And you're reading someone else's. Hey. Wait, there's Evidence. a question That's pending. Correct. Let him That's answer. That's correct, sir. Nope. Hold your, hold your roll. <clears throat> Thank you. You messed up now. Very good recross. <clears throat> we have a new witness. We're going to end our poll, and we're going to get to and the And we'll new take witness. a break now, about 10 minutes or so. Nope, we're going to take a morning break. We're going to take a morning break. I'm going to get to questions. While we take a morning break. I hate how fast they cut the audio. Truly. Truly hate how fast they cut the audio. Oh, Emily, don't pause the live feed. Then you won't know when they're back. And then the chat's going to be like, court's back. And I'm going to be like, what? You just won't know. All right. Uh, yeah. So the poll's closed. Sorry for those of you on Facebook. The poll only shows on YouTube. Um, YouTube is where is where that polls up. I cannot get polls up in the chat um, over on the Facebook's it's a different, it's a different experience over there. We've got, you know, like 26,000 plus over on the YouTube. So we put that poll up, um, as the poll that we asked was, what did you hear Alec Murdoch say in that interview? I, or they 82% of you said, I 17% of you said they, um, with 9.3 thousand votes. Um, Dead Girl Beef, thank you very much for the compliments. I've got both chats up so I can see it. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure we are still rolling on this. I've got to switch feeds because Long Crime has been adding commentary at the breaks. Um, and I am the only commentator in my head. I don't need other commentators in my head. So let us get into questions. Tracy collected four months later, right? The jury gets to decide the weight and impact of an item of evidence. And the jury might look at that and be like, um, four months later, though, it's four months later, though. That's odd. It's odd that it's four months later. And they might not need to show receipts or whatever. It's just, it's just odd. Um, so with that, we're going to get to some questions and some super chats. We've got quite a lot of them. So let's go. Um, has motive been discussed by the prosecutor before they can really discuss motive? There's some motions that they are going to have to deal with because their motive motions have not been dealt with yet. So we have not heard anything about motive and we won't until they have an, uh, a hearing. They're going to have like a 402, 403 hearing on motive. The prosecution said in motions before the trial started that they want to, they want to get into the financial crimes and the storm that was swirling not like let it go, but the storm that was swirling around the Murdoch family. So they want to get into it. Um, Jessica O'Daly asked, could Paul have killed his mother than himself? This was contemplated by the police. The first responders to the scene all testified about this. This case did not have some of the necessary things you would see in that circumstance, including the murder weapon. So when you have that circumstance, there is normally a weapon in close proximity to the second individual. Are there Gucci pickles though? I think there are in fact Gucci pickles, but they, you know. They only sell them through TikTok. So the Gucci pickles are only sold on TikTok. That's the only place you can find them. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I'm being sarcastic. Would I be okay with me? Nicole H said, would I be okay with being shot with Gucci ammo? Question mark, questioning emoji. It's fair. Just started watching Supernatural for the first time. The first time, Christine D. And these Sammy comments with the Winchesters are cracking me up. That's totally fair. Um, wel welcome 
enjoy. There's a lot of seasons. It's a good time. It's a good time to jump into Supernatural. There's a lot of seasons. There's a lot of seasons. Father, Son, and House of Gucci. Not what I expected. I did not expect all the Gucci talk today. Um, no disrespect to TLA on YouTube, but in my opinion, you are the lead attorney. Well, thank you. Um, I, <laughs> I definitely am just Emily D. Baker. Uh, we try, but I have been lead attorney on most of my trials, except for one or two. Um, hey, EDB, somewhat related to the 1970s. Uh, in the 1970s, Gucci made ammo belts as part of a collection. Just thought you'd like to know. Also, thanks for all you do. Look, I'm here for like a let's have let's have a rabbit hole completely to the side of this trial that might deal with a fashion house, and let's talk about something else because when we get the the prosecution's been plotting through flipping over kind of the the puzzle pieces um but not really putting them together yet it is a very difficult case this case is sad it is graphic it is hard to wrap your mind around and either outcome is sad like either outcome's bad if he didn't do this and is being prosecuted for the tragic killing of his wife and son that's fucking terrible. If he did do this and is being prosecuted for the tragic son of his wife and son or the tragic murder of his wife and son, that's also fucking terrible. There's no way around this case not being awful. And then all of the things that are um all of the things that are swirling around Alec are dark. The stealing from clients and their families is freaking dark. The the Mallory Beach boat crash and the fact that Alec was trying to pin the blame on someone other than Paul is fucking dark. The use of power and privilege and money and influence in this town to the advantage of the Murdochs and the disadvantage of others is dark. Does that all mean he killed his wife and son? No, it doesn't. Does that give other people motive to maybe kill his wife and son? It goes both ways. Or it's coming back. That's loud. It goes both ways for me because who would who would dare go up against them? But also, you could see someone being like, there's no justice here. Fuck this shit. I'm done. So they have arguments that go both ways. And in this case, so many of the arguments just go both ways. And that's not good for the prosecution when the arguments can go both ways. I didn't mean to scare all of you. I turned the volume down. It scared me, too. So, um, three months after the murder, buying the ammunition, your loved one's been killed with. That's strange. That's what the prosecution is going to have to argue. If he bought ammo, like, would he buy ammo? Um, I need, I'm curious as to, he didn't get arrested. Things didn't really, the shit didn't all the way hit the fan until, um, September. So we'll see. Um, Ella said it's giving Dynasty the original. Yep, and I didn't get to nearly enough super chats. I'm trying. Gucci is the pawn shop, I believe. I don't know. They never, they never really clarified what the Gucci thousand dollars at Gucci circled was. CC just randomly said your ass for no reason at all. <laughs> I love today's CC. I felt that. That's funny. I don't know what is going on with the sound in court, but it is getting sassy. Um, fluff catnip tip. Thank you so much, Irish Aiden. Appreciated. I'm coming in late to the case. Has the prosecution given a motive? We talked about motive just a few minutes ago. Um, of the They said that these are financial crimes that culminated with the murder. The jury doesn't have that yet. How long was the house taped off as a crime scene? It doesn't seem like very long. Um, so Gucci means bedazzled, not branded. I, well, the we're talking about the receipt and the receipt says Gucci with an amount spent at a location circled. The jury isn't sequestered, correct? Correct. They are not sequestered. I love this witness. Confident, knowledgeable, almost to the point of looking bored. He did look a little tired. He did. Um, follow the grain in your own wood. I, I love that. Lawn Lumber. Lawn Lumber, we have a new tagline for your channel. I'm teasing. We're not stealing somebody else's tagline. Um, I did I did them as, as in them so bad. Not him, but them. Um, interesting. That's another interpretation. I did them, them being Maggie and Paul, not him being Paul. The problem is there's a lot of interpretations of that audio and the jury's going to get to decide Lilith. I will when we get a chance. Gucci ammo or bullet couldn't help myself. I mean, that's fair question. I'm a little behind. It's okay. Um, so am I. Is the current info that Paul, um, 
the pulse head did the things as a result of bullets meant for birds. I thought birdshot was meant to cause little damage. I, they haven't talked about the action um, that they haven't talked about that yet. So, so they haven't talked about that yet, but we will, I don't know if we'll see the corner today. If we do, we'll put up a big, big old warning question. Reasonable doubt on what Alex Murdoch said. I don't think, Oh gosh, I don't think, um, I don't think what he said causes reasonable doubt for the entire trial. I think jurors might have doubt as to what he actually said. And so that's a little bit different, but I don't think what he said causes reasonable doubt to not acquit. What a jury will often do if they can't agree on a piece of evidence that isn't the thing for them is they'll just be like, okay, we're disregarding it. We don't agree. Agree to disagree. Move on. What else do we have? And they'll just disregard it. I heard it, not I. I heard, and I wrote this in my notes yesterday. I heard, um, I did it so bad. And I don't know if it's it's or it, but that's what I heard. It's so bad. I did it so bad. So when I originally heard it, my first thought was I did it so bad. Like I could have not shot them in such a gruesome, horrific manner. Um, but it could also be, you've seen a lot. Yes, I did. It's so bad. I saw all these things, but my first thought was, oh, I, I did it so bad. Like I shot him upwards of the head. I did the, the shooting part so bad. And that's my first thought. So few objections. Isn't what if speculation? Yes. And they really have kept their objections reined in. Um, Mary, I will always take the compliments. Thank you. You've inspired me to keep going towards my dreams. All of you keep going towards your dreams. You never know. I didn't expect my career in my 40s would be YouTuber. And I fucking love it so much. I'm so glad. But also, some of you have interpreted, I did it so bad to... Um, seeing the scene being so bad. Some of you have said, I did it so bad, maybe to interpret, um, I parented so bad and this got out of control. And how did they even get, if he thinks it's the boat case, there's a reasonable explanation there that if he thinks this is the boat case, he didn't protect his family. Um, so there are a lot of interpretations of that. And the jury is going to get to decide. This is a circumstantial case where the prosecution has to put those puzzle pieces together. And then the jury gets to decide if that makes the puzzle or not. Um, and if you're missing some pieces, you're going to get doubt in this case, or more likely you're going to get a hung jury. Um, cause there's going to be somebody, there is going to be somebody on this jury that is like, no way, one way or the other. And so I think hung jury is always a possibility, uh, in a circumstantial case, particularly why is Maggie's family not in court? They've not spoken to the media. We don't know. One can only assume that this is horrific for them. And if they suspect Alec, and we heard that in the interview and we didn't, we heard this on cross-examination when, when, um, when special agent Croft testified about interviewing with Maggie's family, we heard testimony that they asked about Alex. I interpreted that to mean, oh, they want to know if he's a suspect or not. And they want to know if he did it or not. Um, it could be that they wanted to know if he's cleared or not, but that means they're still thinking of him like a suspect. So when they're saying we want to hear about Alec, I think I, I just worry. No, it's not a worry. I wonder, that's the right word. I wonder if um, they don't know which side they come down on on this and they're waiting for the jury to decide and they're waiting to see the evidence themselves. And again, Maggie's family can watch this at home where they don't have to be on display of the entire world on cameras. They don't have to worry about the cameras zooming in on their faces like they've done to Buster several times during this case, where they just zoom in, um, where they just zoom in on, on Buster's face to see how he's reacting. I can understand not wanting that. Um, their family member has been killed. And we heard interviews where Alex said the only thing that I didn't get along with my wife about was she wanted to spend more time with her family and the boys and I didn't want to spend more time with her family. So I've got to imagine everything's not just hunky dory there. Um, so Andrea Larson, I appreciate that. Um, Carrie, where's Nancy? I have no idea if she's in front of the courthouse, in the courthouse, in the courtroom. I don't know. The Gucci ammo is for 300 blackout made with black nickel and shoots about 200 yards at. Okay. Um, the part before I versus them was more incriminating in my opinion. Come um, came from mom's, went to the house, nobody there, went back to the kennels and found them. I mean, it, it seems like if you know, that's the last place they were, you would go back there. 
Um, so sure life creations, reasonable doubt might be one shooter, two guns waiting to see how prosecutions deals with this issue, how a father does something so brutal and changes guns and does it again. It's fair. And the two, the two weapons, they're going to probably argue he's a lawyer. He's a prosecutor. He knew, he knew how to try to make this different. Um, so we're, we'll see. Um, and I, I thought it was really interesting yesterday when the chat asked when we were talking about Paul's friend and the amount of like text messages and calls and then Paul's friend even texting Maggie, like have Paul call me, whether Alec thought the friend would come over to the house and find them and then he wouldn't be there and he would arrive there and then law enforcement would see him arrive there. Like if we're thinking he's planning this whole thing, maybe he's planning for the friend to be the one that finds him. So he's even further removed from the whole situation. But I don't know. Maybe that's why the 20 minute visit. But that's again, all speculation. We have no evidence of any of that. Do you think yesterday's testimony about two shooters was super damaging? The defense is going to keep getting into it. I think that the witness probably speculated more than they should have because the witness was like, anything's possible. But they were talking about reasonable and the witness was really dancing around whether it was reasonable or not. The defense is going to make a big deal out of it. But what the jury thinks of it at the end of the day, I think the stippling is going to be more powerful, but we haven't seen the coroner yet. So there's, I'm sure the jury has a lot of questions and the prosecution is not patching up those questions very quickly because this has gone very slowly. Here's today's reminder that Judge Newman is a black man operating in a good old boy country. Um, I'm not sure he's aware of how it will be perceived by everyone, including the jury, if he's too hard on Alec Murdoch's team. Um, gingy problems. I think I don't, and again, I don't know what judge Newman, uh, feels he's been a judge in this jurisdiction for a really long time. Um, and is clearly very competent at what he does, but there's another part of that in that the judge can't be too hard on the defense because it creates appealable error. So he needs to be mindful of not creating appealable error. But for those that have watched him in other trials, They've said he's been very fair and pretty much the same that he is now. So um, I don't know if he's worried about the perception and the fighting with power or if he is really more mindful of his legal duty, but I don't know. I'm not in his, I'm not in his mind. And so I don't know if he's, I don't know how aware he is that he is dealing with um, the good old boys club. I'm sure he's aware, but again, I think he's probably doing his job as a judge to make sure that there aren't any appealable issues because he's a highly competent jurist, but yes, he is dealing, um, with the good old boys club here and with a almost hundred year legacy of the Murdoch family. And that I'm sure he is not, uh, not lost on him. But again, this, this is a, a really, really good jurist. Theory, AM uh, thought case was going to end up with PM in prison. So he decided rather than have, uh, I don't know who MM is, have to live with PM and himself in prison. He decided, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. If you listen to Alex 911 call, it starts recording as soon as he dials in, but he doesn't sound upset about a second into the recording. I will have to go back and listen. Um, what I will note is that he sounds the same on the recording about the kids as he does in the recording when he staged getting shot in the head. But the jury probably won't know that. Bring the jury. It's my favorite part of the day. I'll show you. If you bring the jury, please. Bring the jury. I'm here for it, Your Honor. Thanks, Judge Newman. Can Paul have used, um, this is a good question. Can Paul have use of guns with the pending charges against him? Kind of doesn't matter. Paul didn't, I don't know what Paul's terms of release were with regard to the boat crash. Paul, uh, Paul was on own recognizance. He wasn't in custody. So I don't, I don't know. Bruce said, as a Southerner, I hear I did him so bad. Could be him or them. Colloquialism is a struggle of this town. I love the colloquialisms. I love them. Um, have a good one is one of my favorites. 
particularly. I love how chatty everybody is wherever you go. I dig it. Um, I want to know what y'all are talking about. But we're going to go back to the three-piece setup. They were just saying the jury is present. Thank you. You may call you next. The witness. sound has been Thank much you, better, Mr. Conrad. The sound has been much better. Anthony Nisht on the setup. Um, the witness is present in court. I think he said Anthony Conrad. I appreciate the closed captions, even when they're brutal. Um, Angie said Judge Newman is just a vibe. He is a whole vibe, and he doesn't seem bothered. Like he's just, he's just. Okay, prosecution witness. <laughs> Spell your last name, please. My name is Michael Anthony Knitch. Great, how are you? Wait, spell your last name. Knitch. All right. Uh, and where are you employed, sir? Verizon Wireless. You're Phones! Your In this capacity, I'm a custodian of records. Yay! So it's in its normal course of business, does Verizon keep uh, records? Wait, who's this that prosecutor? Uh, and does it keep call records? That is correct. Um, just phones. generally speaking, what kind of records does Verizon keep in relation to phones, uh, phones, phone accounts phones, and phones. call records? Subscriber information, cellular data, which could be telephone calls, text message, data sessions. Okay. Phones, phones, phones. Now I need to turn this up. And these have been previously shown to counsel. I'm going to show you what's been marked with State's Exhibit 268. If it starts peaking, I'll turn it back down. Yeah, I'm going to ask you if you recognize that, sir. I do. And what is that? That's what that's what State's oh. Exhibit 268 is <clears throat> Alex Murtaugh's telephone number 803-942-1227. Okay. And don't call the number. The it's probably disconnected, but just don't do the thing. I have. And what is the contents of the, in the, on that CD? Subscriber information, cellular data information, text messages, um, anything related to billing purposes at Verizon Wireless. Okay. And was that uh, were those records previously turned over to law enforcement? They're just uh, in request to a search warrant. They were. They are uh, and verifying you've those that records, it's him. Correct. I have. Uh, and uh, uh, after reviewing them, are those true and authentic copies of the records that are kept by Verizon? They, they are. are. And those are related to uh, Alex Murdahl's uh, Verizon account, sir? That is correct. With the number ending in 1227? That is correct. All right. At this time, state uh, moves to enter Exhibit 268. This is establishing Murdahl's phone is, in fact, Murdahl's phone for legal foundation. No objection, Your Honor. It needs to go beyond so Murdahl saying that's my phone. So this is setting up more foundation for the cell phone stuff that I'm deeply interested in. States, Most phone companies will have custodians of records in different places in the country. So they're not just flying all around. You've got somebody in charge of the West, the East. Do you recognize that? Middle, I do. The and South. What is that? States Exhibit 269, Paul, cell phone 803-842-7845. And have you had an opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I have. And what is the contents of that CD? Cellular information, subscriber information, um, in response to a search warrant. Okay. Uh, and are the contents of that CD uh, accurate, true and accurate they're copies not, of yeah, they're uh, not, records? Verizon's not Verizon just giving out your shit business. without a search they warrant. Are. No phone company. Has. And at this time, State would move to enter Exhibit 269 into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. What are the so last four? I'm going to hand you, this is exhibit 265, so a little bit out of order. And do you recognize uh, that? We've moved on from the so, crime scene. I do. And what is that? States exhibit 265, Maggie, cell phone 803-842-9041. All right. Have you had an opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I have. What, is, uh, what are the contents of the CD? Subscriber information, cellular data information in response to a search warrant. All right. And that's in relation to uh, the number associated with Paul, is that correct? Maggie. Oh, excuse me, yes, Maggie. And what's the last four digits of that number? You didn't ask the last four for Maggie. All right. And that's Paul. Exhibit 265, correct? 
That is correct. All right. And at this time, state would move to enter exhibit two sixty five. No objection, Your Honor. So, there's that. And I'm going to hand you what's uh, labeled as state's exhibit two sixty two. Do you recognize that, sir? I do. Um, and uh, without reading any uh, uh, phone number, full phone number, what is uh, that? States Exhibit 262, Plod Row Records. Right. What? And have you had an opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I didn't hear that at all. I have. And what are the contents of that CD? Subscriber information, seller data information, in response to a search warrant. Right. And those are related to the account associated with uh, Claude Road, correct? That is correct. Uh, Claude. And there is a phone number associated. We're just not going to read it in the record. Is that correct? That is correct. Right. You this could time, do the last four. Right, what these. number is that? Claude Row. State's Exhibit so. 262. So this time, State will move to enter uh, Exhibit 262 into evidence. No objection. They're laying the foundation before they go through the information we off of this. Exhibit 263. Do you recognize that, sir? I do. And what is that? State's Exhibit 263, Marty Cook. All right. And is there a phone number associated with that without reading it? There is. And that's a Verizon phone number, correct? That is correct. What are the contents of that CD? Subscriber information, seller data information, in response to a search warrant. And you've had an opportunity to review that, correct? I have. And those are the, a copy of the same records that were provided to law enforcement pursuant to a search warrant. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. And what number was that again? Stakes Exhibit 263. All right. This time, State, we need to enter Exhibit 263 into evidence. Elizabeth asked the question, are these types of employees at Verizon used to testifying? Yes, he's the custodian of records. It's literally 90% of his job. It's 90%. Uh, State's Exhibit 263. But which, the custodian of records testifies Marty all the time. Cook. No objection. And deals Just with the, and deals with the right, cell phone I'm gonna records. I'm going to hand you State's Exhibit 263. their whole job. Custodian of records means they are the custodian of records. Um, Did you recognize that, sir? Everybody uses Verizon, apparently. And what is that, sir? State's Exhibit 264, Rogan. All right. And is there a phone number associated with that? There is. Right. And we're not going to read that into the record, but have you had an opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I have. Uh, and what are the contents of that CD? Subscriber information, salary data information in response to a search warrant. All right. And uh, the contents of that CD are a uh, accurate copy of the original records provided by Verizon to law enforcement pursuant to search warrant? They are. Okay. Emily said, former Verizon wireless employee here. This guy's whole job is search right? warrants. Yep. Yes, sir. All right. At this time, state will move to enter exhibit 264. Louise Lemon said, only Verizon evidence. coverage works here. No objection. So Verizon must be the best coverage for the area. Yep. Verizon has and the best coverage in rural South state's Carolina. State's exhibit 266. Source, I used to live in rural South Carolina. Did you recognize that? I do. Right. And what is that? State's Exhibit 266, Connor Cook Records. Verizon, and because is there a Verizon associate and account associated with those? So this uh, is Connor Cook. Connor Cook? There is. Have you had an opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I have. Right. And what is the contents of that CD? They just got everybody's Subscriber signs. information, seller data information in response to a search warrant. All right. And those are, that's a true and accurate copy of the records originally provided by Verizon to law enforcement. They just went and grabbed everybody's that is search correct. warrant, everybody's phone. And what's that number you have again? State's Exhibit 266. I imagine we'll see everyone in the boat yeah, crash. This time, State will move to enter Exhibit 266 into evidence. No objection. Admit it. I imagine we'll see everyone Last in the boat one, crash. This is State's Exhibit 267. Am I hand this to you? Do you recognize that, sir? I do. Do you recognize that? I do. All right. And what is that? State's Exhibit 267. Buster's cellular information. And there's a, uh, a number and a Verizon account associated with uh, Buster's phone records? That is correct. We're not going to read that number to the record, but have you had an opp to opportunity to review the contents of that CD? I have. All right. And what is the contents of that CD? Subscriber information, cellular data information in response to a search warrant. All right. And is that an accurate copy of the records originally provided by Verizon to law enforcement in response to a search warrant? They are. And what number do you have? What number is that again? State's Exhibit 267. All right. At this time, state will move to enter. So this is all foundation. No objection. 
to get all those phone records in. And once you get all these phone records in, then you can't get into what was said or what was hand what was this is marked, you know, what this phone back. said to that phone until yeah, you do this. Exhibit 270. Wait, different coverage from you different providers in the US. High low, yes, I will let everyone describe. Some areas you have to choose, some areas only yeah. one is good. And but yes, across the US there are this would be a key plethora. that is used to um, explain the multi call detail with cell site explanation. Oh, cell site uh, data. And is that uh, originally come from a PDF provided with each, each of these search warrant returns? That is correct. And so that document will be found on each of those CDs, correct? That is correct. All right, and this is just a printed out version. That is correct. But is it exactly similar to the explainer on uh, contained on those CDs, correct? Yes, sir. Right. And we need uh, cell site data. At this time, state would move to ex uh, uh, exhibit 270 into evidence. No objection. Okay. Submit it. That I'll look for. All right, for. sir. So let's talk about that document you have in your hands. Um, let's talk about cell site data. Told it, told us kind of what it is, but can you give us a little more detail? What does that do, and, and how does that help someone looking at these records? Um, in response to a search warrant, Verizon provides a key to be able to read the records that were provided. Okay. So this particular record is a Volte call detail record key. Okay. All right. I'm going to take this to you, and I think the Elmo is still up. So the jury will have this, but expert witnesses will explain we this. I think this, I think this witness will explain it more. Um, so once we get past the once we get past the foundation, I'm going to be very interested to see what else this this uh, witness has to say. Very very interested. I'm. I like cell phone data. Okay. Um, um. So looking at exhibit it gives a lot of information. Exhibit 270, we see uh, several columns of information across across that. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, can you read from uh, from your screen there, sir? Can you read some of that information? Yes, sir. The first column is record open date and time. The okay. second, would you like me to read up across? Well, let's 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 lay a little more foundation. Um, the records that are provided on those CDs and what they're in digital format, correct? That is correct. And what program are they uh, uh, sent on? Excel. Okay, Excel form, and that's a spreadsheet, correct? That is correct. And so uh, He's doing when we look at these records, of explaining what each uh, of these they're all provided are. in the columns in the Excel spreadsheet, correct? That is correct. Uh, and each column going left to right uh, is a different sort of information uh, that is on the records, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. And so we'll look at an example in a few minutes, but this is the key to look at to understand what each column uh, is in reference to, correct? That is correct. Okay. So let's look at the far left column, and I believe that says record open date time. Uh, what is what is that? What does that mean, sir? That would be the date and time the call record transpired in local time. In local time. Okay. And what's the second column from the left? That would be the date and time the call transpired in Greenwich Mean Time. Okay. In Greenwich Mean Time, is, is that uh, also known as uh, Universal Time? That is correct. And uh, on June 7th of 2021, do you know the approximate offset for local time and Eastern Time with uh, Greenwich Mean Time? <laughs> He's like, that's not a question I was expecting. Don't make you if I said it was four hours difference. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Going. The defense the is going to fight with. Column. Would what it surprise that? you if I that told you it was four hour difference between credit serving and time. system ID? And what does that mean? That's a network um, name on Verizon from which the, the call transpired. Okay. And what is the column next to that? Please labeled NID. That would be the switch number that Verizon uses to route. It would be so interesting what is, what to be able to switch, see that. Generally speaking, uh, it would be what well, it's considered a hub for multi cell towers. Okay. So, multi cell towers much about switches. One switch. That is correct. Due to rabbit holes and about phone freaking. Going next, cell ID. What is that called? That would be the specific cell tower that the target number used to make the cellular data connection. Okay. And that's the actual tower that a particular call was routed through, correct? That is correct. And uh, the next column says cell face. What is that? What does that, that mean? 
would be the cell face um, that the cellular data connection transpired over. There's typically three faces on, on a tower, each cell tower. So towers are triangles. Okay, next, we see market ID. Yeah. Faces. Um, going that's through. fair. That is different a, ways. The switch um, so you can number. See. So in some records, it'll have that listed. So it's it's the um, the same thing as the NID, but depending on the specific record, which column will be used. Okay, and then next column says ENB. What is that? It's a six digit cell tower number. The first three digits is the market ID, and the last three digits is the tower identification. Okay, next column says DIR. What does that show for, and what does it mean? That's the direction that the call transpired over the Verizon network. And when you say direction, you mean uh, incoming call or outgoing call? That sort correct. of direction, not north, south, east, or west, right? That is correct. Uh, all right. Uh, the next column says MSISDN. What does that mean, sir? That is the Verizon subscriber number that the record is for. Okay. And it says this is your target number, uh, and that's in reference to the search warrant, correct? That is correct. Uh, and so when a search warrant asks for records for a certain number, that's the target number, correct? That is correct. And that's what that column that identifies, correct? That is correct. And next column says call number. What May, does that you mean? can do anything you want. This is the However, number dialed to initiate the call. It's helpful for a guy call. This number will be the same doing, as the mobile directory but also number. Kindle Unlimited MS, should be wiped. That's just a courtesy. And the out calls. For everyone. This is the number your target dialed. Okay. So simplifying it. Emily is simply the number that soon, but we're getting was called close. when someone placed so. a phone call, correct? That is correct. Uh, next column is CPN. What is that, sir? This is the calling party number. So this that is all the foundation the to get into. If the call is outbound, stuff. this column will be the same. You know, I'm very interested. As the mobile directory number, MSISDN. If the call is inbound, this is a number that dialed your target. Okay. And the next column says SOU. Uh, what is that, sir? Seconds of duration. Okay. And that's how long the call lasted, correct? That is correct. Right. And the next column says RAT. What does that mean, sir? That is the type of cellular connection that the data session or call transpired over. Um, and so we see several different categories underneath that. I see a 3G voice, 4G voice, uh, and some others. What, what, what does that stuff mean? What? The Verizon wireless technology that's used to allow that call to take place. Okay. So uh, 3G and 4G are different types of technology Verizon uses? That is correct. And depending on uh, which tower, uh, and where the, the phone is located, it could be, a call could be routed over 3G or 4G. Is that correct? That is correct. Renee asked, can this um, guy testify okay. on an app? Snapchat? Uh, no, Snapchat has their own custodian the next of records. Vice, uh, this is just VICE cell phone, VICE cell sites, um, all that stuff. It's a Volte um, so. connection with an endpoint. So that's a type of device um, that can boost the Verizon isn't, signal. He's a current Verizon um, employee, and yes, this is his job. It's so an indicator if that was used or not. If he was former, they would have a different custodian of records testifying. Um, Voice over LTE is a type of technology similar to the 4G. Okay. Uh, and that's a voice call that's routed over the digital network, correct? That is correct. Uh, and finally, we see VZWNE, net, network extender, extender, excuse me. What is that column, sir? That is a device that allows consumers oh. to um, Do you think Moselle has an extender a, at their house? A network extender to boost their indoor coverage. So there'd be a, a difference in the call type listed in the records. Because if Moselle has so an extender at the house, it'll tell you when you're at the house, not the house customers, more uh, specifically. Network extenders for them to use in buildings to help them connect calls. That would be interesting. That, that is correct. And if a call were routed through such a connector, it would be listed in that call. That is correct. Okay, uh, I'd like to switch over to the laptop, please. That would be very interesting to see. I'm going to hand you back to exhibit 270 in case you need to look at it here. Amber's asking the real questions this afternoon. If you fall asleep on a jury, what happens? Generally, the judge will either call for a break or a All stretch right. break, or your fellow juror next to you might give you a little tap on the shoulder. And I'm going to pull up happen. some of the records that uh, were provided that we just talked about Especially on the Especially when we're doing... The background, like if the jury's not well first one cell phones, they might not know what's coming. I know what I hope. The one to associated see. with Maggie Murdahl and her I number ends in nine zero four one. More information about this, and I believe that comes from. But 
it's it's going to be a lot of foundation to get there, which means this is probably the rest of the day. So, um, Katie asked, does each social media brand have their own specialist for this sort of thing? Well, Instagram and That's Facebook probably all go through Meta Parent Company. Instagram, so Instagram and Facebook might not have their own, but YouTube would have their own custodian of records. Snapchat would have their own custodian of records. They would all have their own. Okay. So we're going to scroll records. down. So. And we're going to talk about a couple of these calls just so uh, the jury understands. Heather said, uh, my number one fear during jury can selection is an narcoleptic. That's fair. And you could always let the judge know. But your fellow jurors, I've seen lots of jurors fall asleep. They're, the other juror normally gives them a little, little tap or the judge will take a break. It's hard. There are days when it's just hard, especially if the jurors go out for a big lunch and then it's boring testimony. And then if the jury box is back up against a wall, you will see the jurors back kind of lean and then lean more. And sometimes the eyes just close, especially if they don't understand why the information is relevant to them. They have to understand why it's relevant. Bear with me, please. And I think that the um, prosecution did a good job in their opening about making the timeline really relevant in this case. Okay. When calls are coming call in and when calls are going out, it made it really relevant to them. So I think they can, I can. Okay. see why um, it matters. So let's walk through this particular I hope they call. Can. Um, he should be giving us pinging information later. All right. Um, call that column, column A. So. We see a number there. What, what is that number, sir? That's the phone number that was associated with the search warrant. Okay. And that's the 9041 number, correct? That is correct. All right. We now know that 9041 okay. is Maggie. B, I see a date. It says uh, May 1st. 1227 two, two, seven is what, Alec. What is that date, sir? That was the date that the search warrant started the request for the search warrant. Okay. So when law enforcement sent a search warrant to Verizon, they requested a date, a uh, record starting on May 1st. Is that correct? That is correct. May 1st, 2021. Uh, and then the next on. The column says six, uh, June 10th of 2021. What is that that date, sir? That is the last day that was requested on the search warrant. Okay. The phone wasn't in use right. after so that. In this case, June 10th was the last day. From the I wonder warrant. that is correct. if the cell records will show how much okay. time Maggie so let's was look spending at, at the B. beach house at Donna um, Moselle during that time. What is column B in this, in this record? So they got records between May 1st and June 10th. That's not overly broad, I don't think, as a search warrant. That is the time that the actual call took place in local time. Okay. And it's very uh, helpful. What time is time. it? 1950 and 20 seconds. All right. Can you convert military to, to civilian time? <laughs> He's like, fuck, man. I am not good at it. Okay. <laughs> so generally, you subtract 12. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> so would that be 750? Don't yeah. shame the man. That is correct. Generally, okay. you subtract 12. Uh, yeah, uh, don't make me do it on the column, stand. We see uh, it says June 7, 2021 at 2350. What is that column? That's the record in Greenwich Mean Time. All right. And so that's in the universal time, correct? That is correct. And um, can you convert that to local time? Well, subtracting 12, would it be? It would be. 11 50 p.m. 50 p.m. Okay. All right. Next column, there's a digit that says 13. What is that digit, sir? And again, the jury will have all of this, but don't make people math can on you the scroll spot. to the top where I can see. That'd make me want to barf. The header on that. I love that. I love that and the audience and maybe the jury on. laughed. It was pretty funny. That is the cell For all of you that can't number. math in public, it's fair. And so in the chat. Uh, that is the direction off of based Sonia's off of Sonia's like laughing at your That is the direction <laughs> the call is in the sector from the tower, correct? That is correct. I would die having to math in public, period. I'll tell you a story about that at some other point. At a elementary school math <clears throat> meeting <throat> where we were asked to try common core math, and the math teacher walked over and was like, You're not trying. I'm like, you've asked me to sit here and do math problems with common core math. A I don't understand B, I don't understand C, I don't math. So no. She's like, you should just give it a try. And the, we're in a room full of people, ma'am. Bear with me, please. No. Nope. Julia, 24 hour time is military? I don't know. We, a lot in the US refer to it as military time. I don't know if it is or not. 
Okay, That's just back on how June it's referred 7, to. And we're back at column 8, 1846. Lori, so I went to. Just said the 13. Deep, deep math and securities. Direction from the tower, correct? But that law enforcement correct. uses it. And medical so uses it. And a number next to that that says 459. Lots of people use 24-hour time. It makes sense. You don't have to worry about AM and PM being. Confusing. That is the market ID. Okay. It's just and that, clarity. And, and market ID, again, what does that mean? <laughs> that would be the switch um, on Verizon Wireless Network. Okay. My kid All has right. his phone. And then next to that is column K, and that he says, it's awesome. there's a digit that says 459240. What is that, sir? That is the EnID. The Matt first Pond three digits the are the, the switch. The second three digits are the cell tower information. Okay. Matt Bond's like phone so to friend. Phone to friend. The actual tower that that call was routed through. Correct. That is correct. And then next to that, in column L, we see M O. Uh, what does that mean, sir? Airlines Mobile use it, which also makes sense. Right. And what does that mean? The cell phone in question to the search warrant originated the call. So this means uh, this call is placed with Maggie's uh, phone, correct? That is correct. I've I've messed up and then booking next flights to that, AM you see PM. A phone number and call an M, badly. And it ends in 9041. Uh, is that the target uh, a phone number? He's looking at the graph. So and next to that, Murdoch has see a, a little number that uh, ends in 0853. He's got his uh, what is that monitor here, so he's looking at this. That was the number that 9041 dialed. Okay. Uh, and then uh, column O, and we see that 9041 number again. Maybe I'll, and maybe I'll switch my phone that, to 24 hour time. Just that was the challenge. number that dialed. Make my brain work different. 0853. Okay. And then uh, next column P, we see 100. I don't even know if my brain could do that. That is time in seconds. Okay. So that's how long the call lasted? That is correct. And w. Then, Sub a column Q, it says LTE. What is that? I mean? don't know if we'll ever go metric. But That's the Verizon technology type that was used to make the call. Okay. So this call is routed over LTE, correct? That is correct. And that's a 4G technology? That is correct. Okay. So let's look at the column below that, and that's column 1847. Yeah, I really want to know if he's using the extender, if his phone's hitting the extender or hitting the router at home. B. Like, and that's the date where I it wanted, says I got questions. Uh, 2021. Once he, meant, six, once he eight, mentioned extender, zero, I was like, one, zero, four, there's an extender? Uh, 24. Good. I want to know what that uh, column means. Which column? Uh, column D. And we see the date of June 8th of 2021. And it is a time that says 010424. That is the time in Greenwich Mean Time. Okay. Uh, now, you Europe previously testified that in column D, that time's normally... Canada has the all-dress chips. Is that correct? That is correct. But in this uh, particular record, uh, we see a time... They in, might have uh, a Greenwich cell Meantime, extender, correct? not a Wi-Fi extender, that is correct. a cellular this, extender that uh, extends cell phone. Call, why is it in Greenwich Mean Time? Because beyond, this call connected to... Beyond Wi-Fi extender. Um, Verizon, but the call was not answered on the cellular connection and routed to voicemail. Okay. So, uh, oh, lawn lumber, that's fair. Because the, like it doesn't match. Uh, this like, call okay, is not look. picked up. Uh, the call is routed to Verizon server, right? That is correct. correct. Uh, and uh, because of that, Verizon records the record in Greenwich Mean Time. That is correct. Okay. Having uh, to but, explain um, the back end of how cell phone works in court in an understandable, interesting way uh, is really fucking so difficult. Subtract four. From zero one zero four twenty four. It's very technical. And it can be very dry. Be yield of time of nine zero four twenty four in Eastern. So time. important. That would be correct. Okay. P I also wonder if they had a VPN. That's correct. We'll okay. see. All right. Um, well, let's skip over. We'll see. If uh, they column a I, column J, and column K. I believe you said previously column K was uh, the digit associated. I want chips too. Dude. That is correct. Well, here we see in this one, N-A. Is that what that says? That is correct. What does that mean? Why does it say N-A? Well, the call didn't actually connect to a cell tower when the call didn't answer and it routed to voicemail. It's an internal routing, so there would be no cellular data as far as cell tower that. information provided. Okay. So uh, a call was placed to the 9041 number, correct? That is correct. 
uh, and a 901 phone uh, most likely ring, correct? That is correct. Uh, but no one answered. That is correct. And so uh, Verizon did not record a particular cell tower associated with that call. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, let's finish up with this record. Ooh, uh, we're finishing. Call him in again. That's the target number, correct? Oh, 9041. That is correct. All right. And then we see uh, in calling in is in November 9041 again. We have the same gone number. To where the what does that mean? Are pinging. That means the 1227 number dial the 9041. Okay. All right. And no one answered, correct? That is correct. Uh, and uh, I, I skipped over column, column L. It says MT. And Don't skip over column mean? L. Mobile terminated. Okay. And so that call was not, in fact, completed, correct? It was forwarded to voicemail. Okay. All right. And after uh, that 9.04 p.m. phone call, we, several, we see multiple more calls to Maggie's phone, correct? Or multiple? Yeah. Correct? That is correct. All right. And are any of those calls answered according to the records that Verizon keeps? They are not. All right. I'm going to shift to pulling up the call records for uh, the number ending in 1227. And that is State's Exhibit. Two sixty-eight, and that's the number associated with uh, Alex Murdoch's phone. Correct. That is correct. Uh, that is. Dr. All right. Bear I'm with listening. Okay, and let's look at column 2371. All right, you see that on your screen, sir? Yes, sir. All right, and we see a time uh, and the column D, and that says uh, June 7, 2021, uh, 2104.24. Is that correct? That is correct. And this, this time is in local time. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, and the quick conversion on that, or excuse me, so no conversion is necessary on that. Um, so that's 9.04 p.m. and 24 seconds, correct? That is correct. Jump, jump, and that is kids are going. the same uh, time that With we just saw spouse. Maggie's uh, uh, records that we just reviewed, correct? That is correct. All right. And so we see if we look over uh, in column I, J, and K, we do have cell tower information for uh, the outgoing call from Alex's phone, correct? That is correct. All right. And then uh, we see that this is code MO. And what does MO mean again? Mobile originated. So that means this this account is placing the call, correct? That is correct. The account ending in one two two seven. All right, we're going to put up a poll about the number in nine time. zero four one, correct? So that I'm is curious. correct. Uh, and then uh, looking below that, we're not going to review this uh, line by line, uh, but we see a number of other calls uh, starting at about nine zero four p.m. Uh, and onward over the next uh, hour or two. Of calls made from the 1227 account, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. I, it will be very interesting, I promise. Uh, no Once, other questions from the state. Oh, that's it. Once they start tying Garden this fence. together with other witnesses, this is the foundation. There will be other witnesses that take this data and interpret it. I'm very curious about what cross-examination has to say. Let's get to cross. Wait, 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 wait. Dick. We're not going to use Jim as the attorney for the cell phone witness? Is Dick an expert in cell phone witnesses? I am so curious how this decision was made. Does he do a lot of cell phone data? I'm curious... Also, when is it time for lunch? They're probably trying to finish this witness. I'm looking for, uh, apologize, the technology is about with me here. Um, so <laughs> okay. you work for Verizon. That is correct. 
and you are you just deliver records to different people or do you have a more what's so special word functional but do you have about a, being a custodian a of records beyond just coming to court and delivering records no yes sir i work in executive relations and i respond to subpoenas other court records and other type of cases that are associated with the executive relations team and, and obviously you have to have some understanding of what you deliver, a lot of bullshit, what, it, what these things mean right that is correct um and as i understand it um i'm going to ask you in a minute what some things mean Wait, why in um, a minute why not ask so now? do you see is this on is it up? can you see that yes sir okay this is gonna so be so if you look down i'm ready for it bring the action dick no. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. So if you look down at six, seven, and if you look at, I'm trying to find some consistency here. Those NAs in lines. He's I just and got so J much on several calls above that exposition. That? I do. What does that mean? Um, that means that the call was routed to voicemail. So th these are voicemails to Alec. That's not what um, he said. This record is for one two two seven. Um, so based off of this record, one two two seven. He's got to look at the chart of which record goes to which, which is fair because it's not his job to connect the dots. It's just his job to provide the foundation. So I'm interested how this is going to go. Dick might be an expert in cell phone. Might well be. So like that call is dialed. The Let him answer. Um, but it was routed to voicemail. Okay, that's him dialing out. But what about if you go up to six? He answered seven, what you asked him about at twenty two oh eight. We needed more lifting. Is that another? Is that a call out or a call in? It's interesting that the voicemails Verizon to Verizon phone don't hit a tower; they just go internally. Is that the line that you have highlighted? I didn't know that. No, it's. I'm talking about go up to six seven. Maybe go highlight it. Okay. Uh, either one of these right here. Here. Yeah, that's fine. Is that an outgoing or ingoing call? Incoming call. That was mobile forwarded, so it was forwarded to voicemail. Nay, Rose. I, get it forwarded. Voicemail I think was once Alec it's admitted into it, evidence, we'll see it. Somebody else was making it. Who, who initiated the call? He's going to need a list of the, the numbers. 70. 8:45. So that was a call. Loop says into, this reminds me of that one time Congress had to question Alec. Mark Zuckerberg. That yeah, it was ridiculous. That is correct. And tell me where I look on this to see what's outgoing and what's incoming. Uh, row L or column L. Actually, M O N T. Here's what I will F. say. Okay. If the jury okay, so, is not highly um, technologically inclined, means this what? might help them understand Mobile more. Mobile originated. So this might actually break it down better for the jury. That's he's the original. Truly, call. I just want him to correct. let the witness okay. answer. M. But this really might help the jury. M T. What does that mean? The Mobile juror might terminator. just be. Um, he, so he was he was getting an incoming call. This might just be helping the correct. prosecution make this witness make more sense. Mobile forwarded. What does that mean? Routed to voicemail. So there's two of them. Mean go to well, all of them. Mean voicemail. No, but not all of them means what voicemail. What's the difference between MT, MO, and MF? The direction of the call on Verizon's network. Okay. Is Mobile MF one of the options? Is, he was making a call and it went to voicemail. MO is whoever called them initiated the call and went to voicemail. No, MO means the seller subscriber in response to this search warrant made a phone call out. MO. So that would be Alex calling somebody went to voicemail. Correct. MT is somebody called him and it went to voicemail. Mobile terminated means that our subscriber in response to the search warrant is the one that the call placed to and could have answered. And, and so one of them's coming in goes to voicemail. Another one's going out That's goes not what to he voicemail. Said. And MF is what? <laughs> no, sir. MO means mobile originated. A phone call no, transpired over our network. So we could have answered the phone call. It would show up as MO. We being who? Verizon. This, if, if the royal Alec we is Verizon. The phone call, it would have 
it would be mobile terminated because our subscriber answered the phone call. Oh, okay. So M-O, this actually might he help the it. jury because this actually my, breaks it down slower. MO is mobile originated. So that means there was subscriber just a 1227 Why dialed was out on Verizon's network. Okay. And it was answered. There was a Russell. It could have been answered, yes. I mean, it was a call that transpired and it would create a cellular connection, which would connect to a cell tower. Okay. Not, and it wasn't answered by voicemail. Which record? The MO. <laughs> <laughs> MO is mobile originated. Which I got means, that. I got that part. I just want to know stop how you off. differentiate between these calls as one's going out. If one's I'm the prosecutor, in, I'm saying objection, allow Either the witness way. to answer. MF is mobile forwarding. <laughs> right. So that call would have went to voicemail. Whether he was getting it or giving it. Whether well, if someone were calling him right. and he did an answer, then it would be forwarded to voicemail. That's MF. That is correct. Okay, I got it. I finally, I finally get it. it. Took me a while, but again, I'm not a Trying. technological expert here. Did you see him so, look to the jury? I'm not a um, technological look at expert his here. His calls, oh, oh, um, me. To the extent um, that they are made at certain times. He could have chosen times, another attorney on his team to do this, and he didn't it's for a reason. Going or went to voicemail. I don't know what that. E- I don't know what the that reason is, is. Now, um, can I see Maggie's phone? But I think this might help the jury. If there's any on the jury that weren't clear because the prosecution just ran through it kind of quick, because the prosecution's going to have another witness that explains this too, this actually might help the jury clear some things up because if the jury was so confused about the difference between MO, MT, MF, and whatever else is on the graph that they're looking at, this is going to make it more clear for them. Generally, what the defense wants to do is make things less clear. So it's interesting. And it's interesting, of all the attorneys on the team... The dick was like, you know what I want to do? Cell phone. Normally, cell phone data is relegated calls, to less experienced um, attorneys because it, it can't really go sideways. You're asking about records. 702. So dealing with custodians and of records normally goes to, to less experienced attorneys or technologically savvy attorneys on the team. So it's interesting that lead counsel so tell me after that seven has chosen strategically PM, to be the one cross-examining the cell phone witness. There's a reason. When is everything after that? I wonder what it is. I don't know. Well, why, Dick? Why? Why was this your choice? Why is this your she, strategy? The, w- when is the first time her phone goes to voicemail? The twenty three forty call went to voicemail. Then the next call log after that. Is a mobile originated, which means there were two outbound calls. Well, this is not made. the first time this way has had to deal with it. Calls, for sure. The rest of the calls were routed to you could see mobile his face. telephone number 9041's voice. This now. witness What's is the last time on? she made a call out. This is actually interesting. 1950. What time was that? In- Non-military time. 1950 is... Seven. <laughs> the prosecutor gave him a lifeline. Counsel, don't... Call she oh. makes out. Right? That is correct. What about the last call she received and answered? Ooh, better time. Well, the two calls that were mobile originated after that, the rest of them were routed to voicemail... Yeah, but what are the two calls after that? Could you please highlight? We're skipping calls. We're skipping calls. Complicated, I know. Even for you. Which which one are you putting up? Any um, the commentary is not appropriate. It's complicated, I know. Even for you. Stop it. Don't let him do that, prosecution. Right. It's not complicated for this man. The thing that's complicated for this man is figuring out what the fuck you're asking. Because you've asked two different things and you didn't even know you asked two different things. So saying it's complicated even for him is just kind of degrading and condescending. This dude knows this shit inside out and backwards. And if you asked a better question, maybe he'd give you a better answer. Okay. And was there any inbound that was answered after 750? There were not. Okay. And one one other thing. Take 
that 750 and put it up. Is, the, is the prosecutor helping him? Okay. I do not work for you, Dick. No. Okay, no, it's okay. So, no, go back down a little bit. Matter of fact, let's start with 6 9. Sir, why is it? What? Now, I have helped okay, can you scroll that up defense attorneys so we can all move along, but only when it's just the two of us doing a trial. Even Alec looks annoyed. So how about look at this for 6 9 and 6 He's like, 10, I can question this witness better than 10. this. And I'm Are the there defendant. any outgoing or incoming or, vo uh, in, in other words, any outgoing call, first of all, from that phone after on 6 9? Mobile telephone number 9041 did not place a call outgoing. Okay. What about any incoming calls? The rest of the records are incoming calls that were routed to voicemail. Voicemail. So the calls coming into her that routed to vo voicemail, no calls after um, six, six, nine or further. Okay. That's now, correct. let me ask you this. Um, text messages, are they shown on these records? You charge for them, right? They what? are in a separate record, yes. Were you asked to produce those? They are in the file. They're in the file. It's just we're not looking at them here today. That is correct. And are they reflected on this kind of uh, same format? Uh, very similar. They have a you separate key know. to translate exactly what each co column and row means. Those okay. are already in evidence. But you produce those text messages for all the phones we've talked about here today. That is correct. Were any other phone records subpoenaed from you other than the ones that have been put into evidence? The only ones that I'm aware of is the ones that I have been, um, I received the records of. Did you ask for more records than these? I did not. Did the search warrant designate records other than these? We would have to review the search warrant. You don't have it with you? No, sir. He's like, I brought okay. what I was Thank asked to bring. Thank the indulgence for just a moment. Remember, in opening statements, the defense said the cell phone records are incomplete. So it'll be really interesting to see where we get to these incomplete records. What, what's incomplete? What do you not have? I want to get to the location data of the phones. What was incoming outgoing from the extender, the, the cellular extender in the house? Um, and it's very interesting to know that when something... Attention policy for Verizon. How long do these records stick around? Verizon maintains records for billing purposes for around 18 months uh, in response to a subpoena or search warrant we do keep the detailed records on file for those search warrants but absent somebody serving a search warrant they can serve a preservation months, notice purged, we no longer have that information on file typically does anybody have them? I mean, the billing information would be available. But they like, could ask to preserve. Could go and look at your bill. But this kind of information would not. That is correct. <clears throat> okay. And when <clears throat> you indicate these calls went to voicemail, how long does a phone Voicemail's ring before it kicks into voicemail? There's no set time. Who, who sets it? Well, it depends on how long it takes the network to locate the call. So when you hear a ring, when you're dialing someone, it's it really just so the network trying to locate. Individual. So the phone itself can never super ring well if the network phones. can't find you. And that may take two or three or four rings? It could so take two, three, up to six. So when my wife well accuses me of being impatient and hanging up on her before she gets to answer the phone, you just told me it's because the network, many instances, has not connected with her phone. Objection yet. relevance. So your wife network is locating you. your phone. When you hear the, the ringing, the network is, is locating where you are on the network. And that could take a while. And so I didn't have wife joke on my five rings and figure she's not going to answer it. I don't want to leave a voicemail. I hang up. And so there's no voicemail. It's just an incomplete call on your record. Well, I mean, if she didn't answer your phone call and let it go to voicemail, then it would ring out. If the network Maybe I don't want to leave a voicemail. Right? Maybe Four she doesn't want to answer your call. And I hang up before she can get to the phone. Sure. I would have objected. I would have objected for relevance. I would have said relevance. What does Dick's wife have to do with this? Just to clarify. I would have. When the Verizon records in. indicate that a call is routed to voicemail, I believe he previously testified that could mean the phone itself ring, correct? That is correct. But there's a, another condition the phone could be in as well. Uh, if the phone is turned off 
and someone dials that number, what would the Verizon record indicate? Y'all, you know, I've set my phone. It would route to voicemail. And it would look exactly the same. It's military right? time. Yes. And there's no way to look at these records and tell whether a phone is off, uh, just not answering, or uh, potentially shut off or otherwise not connected to the network, correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay. It's his job to confuse people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What about if it's an airplane mode? Uh, does, would it, the same thing happen? Go to voicemail, question. right? Airplane mode, it doesn't ring, doesn't answer. It goes, to, would it go to voicemail? The network would still try to find where you're located. So if you're in airplane mode, the network may not know where you are. So it would still attempt to ring. And these records don't give you any GPS location on phones, correct? You can't get that. GPS outside the scope. Uh, according to the records that I've seen, um, the they scope. have the cell tower information, but not the specific. That GPS. was outside the, the scope of redirect. Depending on how many cells are connecting it, uh, sometimes I mean, can be very. If you're in New York City and there are five cell towers, you can probably get it pretty close. But if you're in uh, rural Colton County or Hampton County, it might one longer. over it here might. and maybe one way back. back there. It's much more difficult to find a specific location. Correct. And it's a novel no, Outside the scope. 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 That information. Of redirect. Response if you want. Senator, he can answer whether he's able to answer the question. However, he's not qualified as an expert. I don't. All right. You may answer the question if you can. I would have no way of knowing. I'm not qualified as far as the triangulation of the cell tower information. <laughs> Is that what you were getting ready to say before he objected and said you weren't qualified? Objection. Really that would be a qualified. standard You've never response. Testified about location. Who? The question. You've never testified about what cell phone tower location uh, means uh, and, and how it's used. I testified to the accuracy of the records that were provided. <laughs> okay. I'm you. the custodian <laughs> of records. Here are the MF. Are right, next witness? Lunch. <laughs> Your Honor, it's 12.30, please. Please. He's like, no, we're running to one. Next witness. That was really funny. The defense has a habit, and we've noticed this pattern now. The defense likes to ask people whose job it's not to do things. Like, well, why didn't you do this? And they're like, it's not my job. And they're like, see, this investigation is flawed. Stop asking the people whose job it is not for the thing. It's just dumb. Uh, yes, Miguel, let's end the poll. Loudly, please. <laughs> Another custodian of records, it looks like. Paul David McManigal, M-C-M-A-N-I-G-A-L. Damn it, I didn't catch this one. Good morning, Mr. McManigal. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon. I heard McGonigal. Damn it. Where are you currently employed, sir? U.S. Secret Service. I am currently employed as a sergeant with the Charleston County Sheriff's Office. All right. And what are your duties there entail? I'm currently assigned to the United States Secret Service as a task force officer on the cyber fraud uh, task force. Cool. What does this have to do with the murder case? Probably phones. <laughs> that explains the Secret right. Service badge. And generally, uh, in your work on the uh, cyber crimes task, task force, what does that entail? I'm a digital forensic examiner, uh, so Thanks. I'm responsible for gathering electronic data from computers, tablets, cell phones, DVRs, uh, vehicle infotainment systems. All right. And when you say task force officer for the state, uh, for the Secret Service, Secret Service is a federal agency, is that correct? That is correct. Right. But you're actually paid and are still an officer with the Charleston County Sheriff's Office, is that correct? He's on loan. That's also correct. You're loaned out to the Secret Service? Okay. He must be very uh, smart. In this case, um, you provided some records uh, in June of 2021 by uh, an individual by the name of Dylan Hightower. Is that correct? That is correct. Hightower. Uh, and what did he provide you? Oh. Uh, he provided me with a electronic extraction from a cell phone uh, cell that right. was extracted as binary data and not yet processed by forensic software. All right. And... Uh, when he provided that to you, did he tell you which phone it was uh, from? Uh, I believe he said it was uh, belonged to Alex Murdoch. Okay. Uh, and that's the one he extracted uh, from Alex Murdoch on June 10th of 2021? Uh, that is correct. 
And what role, uh, what did you do with that information that he provided you, with that data? I was asked to redact potential client, uh, client lawyer privileged information um, by reducing it down to a certain time frame that was more pertinent to the case and po potentially reducing any uh, privileged communication. Wait, and you also you dealt with the taint? Did you make decision of what to remove and what not to remove personally? I did not. The decision of what to remove was made by Price Summer with the Ninth Circuit Solicitor's Office. And she's an attorney? She is an attorney. Um, Multiple and, taint people. Uh, he took the information and sent it to the taint attorney. a copy of the digital evidence, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, you provided that back to Dylan Hightower? That is correct. Did you provide any further analysis to the data itself? I did not. Did you redact any call logs from that data you're providing? Call logs were not redacted at all. All right. Let's move on. You have Fine. also been involved in one other aspect of this case. Um, This is going, I hope this is going to be interesting. And they used him for more than just cordoning out information. The defense, by the way, already has all these exhibits. Nothing the prosecution is showing them is new. I know they take a minute to like review it, but nothing they're getting is new. Like it's, it's not new information. So uh, let's see, I need to make a note. This individual um, cordoned out the potential attorney-client privilege information, sent it on to the ninth solicitor to review it to, for taint, and then took uh, the information back. And none of the call logs were redacted, which is interesting to know. So we're st we've moved from sure it's been as the crime scene foundation to the forensic foundation. Do you recognize that, sir? I do. Long number, they make what it real easy. It? This is a chain of custody today. form from the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, which we commonly refer, refer to as SLED. Taints, dicks, right. and double loads is what uh, we have this morning. See any handwriting on there that is yours? I do. Right. And uh, what date did you sign that form? Uh, June 9th, 2021. Okay. And that form is related to what phone exactly? Uh, there was a Apple iPhone 11 uh, that was collected and brought to me by Special Agent Ryan Kelly with SLED. Okay. Uh, and was that phone locked when he provided it to you? It was. Uh, and did you and your uh, uh, forensic investigation, did you attempt to unlock the phone? I did. Were you successful? I was not. Uh, and uh, is that Paul's uh, phone? I, I believe it was, yes, sir. Tells you something about uh, locking your phone. Tells you a lot about locking your phone, doesn't it? All right. And at this time, state would uh, move to exhibit 299 to evidence. Lock your phones, people. Uh, Kate, if they don't ask what's so secret about the Secret Service, I will be and devastated. You what's been devastated you. by it. I think having one emergency person in case something happens to you might be helpful, but lock your phone. Look, they're not going to be able to get into it. And you have one Mark person in case something happens to you. It's going to be for ID purposes only. Well, let me ask you if you recognize that. There are people who don't lock their I phones. Do. Yes, there are. And what is that? This is the iPhone 11 that was brought to me by Special Agent Ryan Kelly in the sled. And that's, that's the phone you attempted to unlock, but were unsuccessful, correct? That is correct. All right. And I believe on that bag there's an orange sticker. You see that, sir? Yes, sir, I do. What they is that orange try sticker? Uh, this seems. is a sticker I place on devices that I have attempted to process or processed successfully. Okay. And at this time, state's going to to put this in as ID only. So it's marked for evidence, it's okay. not admitted. Okay. 
I'm not. Try, I'm trying not to count down. Oh my. But I'm starting to get. This time, I'm going to Andrew States Exhibit Two Ninety Eight. You recognize that, sir? Yes, sir, I do. I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, this is also a chain of custody report from the South Carolina Law it's, Enforcement it's Division. Not, it's sled. An issue. It is, right. do you recognize it is your not an uncommon occurrence. I do. What, time, what date, excuse me, did you sign that? This is August 12th, 2021. And what does that form signify? Uh, this is the date I returned the phone to Special Agent Kelly. Okay. And at this time, State would move to place... Exhibit 298. Exhibiting. Objection. And so you attempted to unlock Paul's phone, correct? That is correct. And you were unsuccessful. That is also correct. Uh, did you alter in any other way the data that was on Paul's phone during that time? Uh, no, sir. Okay. No further questions. Please Cross examination. Blessed be short. There's not a lot to ask this witness about. Truly not a lot to ask this witness about at all. Wait, a Good new afternoon. defense Mr. attorney. Barbara, one of the attorneys for Mr. Murdoch. Good afternoon. Uh, I really just have one question. When you receive this phone, uh, was it better the battery be completely dead? Uh, the phone was powered off when I received it. Did you charge the phone after you received it? I did. That's more than one question. But do you know whether or not it was um, completely dead, battery dead? When you I do not recall if the battery was completely drained. No further questions, Rob. Anything for I wonder why. why. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. I wonder why that matters Part to them. Please go. calls uh, John Van Allen. The court is just like, we are moving through these foundational witnesses. Go, 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 go. They're like, we got, the court's like, we got 15 minutes. And what we're going to do is call another witness. <laughs> okay, next prosecution witness. I do. State your name again for the record. Spell your last name. Jonathan Van Houten, V A N H O U T E N. Mr. Van Houten, Secret Service. Employed, sir? United States Secret Service. All right. And how long have you employed there? This uh, April will be three years. All right. And are you currently a law enforcement agent? Uh, I am not. Okay. And you're a civilian employee of Secret Service? I am. All right. But you do have a background in law enforcement, correct? Yes. I uh, retired after 21 years with the Columbia Police Department as an investigator. For the last 10 years, I was assigned as a digital forensic examiner with the U.S. Secret Service. Okay. Digital you forensic task force officer? Correct. During that time? Yes. And you retired so from he the was on loan. when? Uh, April 20th, 2020. He was like, fuck this shit, I'm out. And in, the, in this case, uh, you were provided a phone by, I believe, Britt Dove. Is that correct? All right. We are now Dove, to correct. the digital forensic examiner or to a digital forensic examiner. This is not uncommon where you will get the, um, you will get somebody who works for local law enforcement and then will be on loan to federal and then he retired and now he's a civilian contractor with the Secret Service. Still doing the same thing he was doing before. Which means he probably gets his retirement. This is the SLED law enforcement and then paid by Secret Service. Division chain of custody not a bad that was gig. submitted to me by Lieutenant Dove. All right. And you recognize uh, your signature on that form? I did sign this form. Uh, what day did you sign that form? March 21st, 2022. Okay. All right. At this time, state would move uh, Exhibit 271 as evidence. No objection, Your Honor. Admit it. Okay, I'm going to hand you State's Exhibit 272. Let me see if you recognize that, sir. This is an evidence photo that I acquired of the device that was submitted to me. You took that picture? I did. 
And do we see a sticker on the back of that phone? There is a yellow sticker on the phone. What is it? Can you read that sticker, please? It's, uh, it appears to be some type of case number, evidence number, uh, identifying as an Apple iPhone, the model number with a SIM, and an agency case number. And if you just read the- Which phone is this? Is this Paul's phone? Or we have, is this Paul's number. phone? 7021-0204, item number 10. Thank you, sir. This time, state moves exhibit 272 in evidence. Okay. I want to know what he did. All right. So I believe you said March 29th of 2022 is when the lieutenant general advised you up on, sir? March 21st. Excuse me. Yes, 21st. All right. And why did he bring it to you? Um, it's my understanding that the phone was locked and he re slid requested assistance of the Secret Service to unlock the device. Mm -hmm. And uh, at Secret Service, uh, did, at that time, did you have a, a tools available that could potentially unlock that phone? Yes. And did SLED have those tools, at least on that date? At that time, they did not. Okay. All right. And what tool uh, did you use to attempt to unlock that phone? For this, for, for my unlock attempt, I used a tool called Celebrite Premium. Okay. Uh, and uh, Celebrite Premium is a way to potentially break into, uh, excuse me, lock phones, correct? That is the only use for that tool. All right. Um, and just generally speaking, how does a Celebrate Premium attempt to unlock a lock phone? It uses its proprietary software and attempt to brute force the device. Okay, what, SLV, what does brute force mean? It depends brute force on the case. Is if we don't have I'm the, not surprised the code, um, feds are we involved. will attack the device. How they got to Secret um, Service versus attack the data on the device FBI, I don't know. But it's not to unusual to have federal law enforcement help. And uh, a device that's locked. Because local law enforcement did not have this tool at that the time. The data? What, sounds like they do now. What underlying condition exists that prevents you from seeing the data? Well, for Apple iPhone devices, there are two types of locks. Valerie, it's my understanding it's and very expensive. First unlock. And I don't before know how first they determine unlock, who gets it. Um, is they have the phone is either powered down, it's, for. it's been turned off and rebooted, or a code has been entered in too many times incorrectly. Um, if you were to, an analogy for it, if you think of it as a lock. bank vault, it is the before first unlock at which we are, have to brute force the device is like the big steel door. Okay. Um, and that underlying data is encrypted, correct? All the yes. Lines. And you would not be able to read that data, correct? I have to unlock the device to get to the data to decrypt it. Okay. And so Subright Premium, you said, uh, attempted to do a brute force unlock, correct? Yes. Okay. And ultimately, was that uh, attempt successful? It was. It was successful because uh, I generated a predefined dictionary to attempt first prior to the tool using its own dictionary. Okay. Oh. Um, and what do you mean by that? What does that mean? Well, humans are creatures of habit. They like to use numbers that are relevant to them. Most people will use their date of birth, family date anniversary, birth. a child's birth, the death of a parent um, as the access code. So what we do generally is we get as many um, social engineered codes or dates that are relevant to the particular phone. It's uh, also how we hackers get first. your shit, by the way. Uh, once that attempt, the social is no engineering, viable, putting your birthday on the internet, uh, putting your kids' birthdays on the internet, hardcore, report, and then using those. Process. And this is how kind of hackers lucky, social engineer you. Preceded number, if the if the sub agreement has to brute force its way through and unlock a phone, how long would that take? So for a four digit phone, if you had a four digit numeric PIN code, uh, we are limited to a, an attempt of 146. Michael Pepper, that's very smart. attempts per day. So a four digit code has a maximum possible numeric value of 10,000 attempts. So at 146 attempts a day, it would roughly take a little over two months to 68 days to unlock that phone. Adding two extra numbers to a six digit, uh, going from a four digit to a six digit, uh, there are approximately 1 million possibilities now. Y'all use six digit codes. attempts per day. It could take upwards 19 years. Six digit codes, right. folks. Um, now you, you said that you could only do 146 attempts a day. Is that correct? Based on technology at the time and current technology, technology is progressing, so it is getting faster. 
Okay. Um, why six is the digit software limited code to just 104 or more? This, this is a security protocol chip built into Apple. Uh, it limits the time frame that he said somebody can years. attempt to brute force a device. Uh, the, the first, is, it's an average of one attempt every 15 minutes. Apple limits brute force. All right. Uh, but ultimately, you said you seeded several numbers into uh, Cellbrite Premium to give it some potential guesses first before just. That's why it takes so long. You can only try once every 15 right? minutes. Yes. Once I start the brute force process, there is an option for me to enter uh, my own dictionary or numbers that are relevant that I think is relevant to uh, the user of the device. Uh, in this case, I entered a, a number that uh, successfully unlocked the phone rather quickly. Okay. And what was that number associated with? I believe the number was associated with the date of birth of Paul Murdoch. Okay. All right. And so once you successfully unlocked the phone, what did you do with it? Sir? So it was a uh, I notified some variation of his own date, that date the, of birth. Uh, the phone successfully unlocked. I advised him that I was going to be getting a full file system extraction since I so still have the phone in my phone. possession. Lieutenant Dove provided me with an external hard drive to uh, place the extraction on, at which time I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so you did a full file extraction uh, and placed it on a hard drive, correct? Correct. Now, uh, did you examine the contents of I that? Uh, full file extraction. I did not. Uh, SLED has their own examiners. How uh, many of you just changed your cell phone passwords? Them, the just pop and a so one in the, the chat uh, if you just changed your cell phone password. You placed on a hard drive and provided to Britt Dove. Is that substantially the exact same data that you extracted from Paul's phone? It is. Alec Murdoch did not provide the code to Paul's phone, it has not. only to Maggie's phone. He didn't know Paul's. He didn't know Paul's code. And Paul was 22, so it's not unusual that he didn't know Paul's code, but he didn't know Paul's code. And then that seemed authentic to me. I'm going to hand you State's Exhibit 273. He gave Maggie's only. This is interesting information. And this is also how people myself? go through social media to socially engineer hacking. Hacking is much more this successful This is the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division chain of custody uh, where I return the phone to Lieutenant Dove. All right. And do you recognize your signature on it? I do. All right. And what date did you sign out? Uh, March 24th, 2022. All right. And you uh, then provided Paul's phone back to... I love forensic evidence. Uh, Lieutenant Duff, correct? Correct. Uh, at this time, state would move to enter exhibit 273 with evidence. Okay. Seven minutes. Okay. Dan Bell is and like, I already have a 16 I'm gonna show you code. It's been It'll take 179 ID. years to unlock your phone. This is 274. I'm glad to see so many of you, you just like, shit, I'm stuff? changing. <laughs> I'm changing my passcode immediately. Yes, this is the phone I received. Okay. And that sticker on the back? It matches what I, a photograph that I took. Okay. The, the photograph we put in evidence, the sticker on this phone matches that. Correct? It does. Okay. After lunch, we should start getting into some real interesting cell phone stuff because All right, one he might have been question. the one that extracted oh, the videos, the photos. There have been a couple of questions about Faraday bags <laughs> in this trial. What is a Faraday bag, sir? A Faraday bag is <laughs> this a, is why the prosecution basically didn't what care it is earlier. a bag that shields electronic signals from entering or exiting the bag. So he's answering okay. the defense. Uh, when do you use those? And what is the danger by placing a phone in a Faraday bag? What is the danger you're trying to prevent? You we're uh, attempting to prevent a remote wipe um, or a remote destruction of the data on the device. Once uh, law enforcement takes a phone into evidence I'll tell you about the best remote custody, wipe I ever saw. Uh, are there other ways time. to prevent a remote wipe? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, powering the phone down completely, um, not leaving it plugged to a charger, removing the SIM card, or the easiest is to place the phone in airplane mode. It'll disable the cellular data and the Wi-Fi signal. Uh, and you said that the danger is it, the phone could be remote wiped. Yes, somebody with the account case. username and password could log into the Find iCloud iPhone. account and set a iCloud. remote signal. That signal will remain on the tower or in the on the network until Apple, the phone you can is do reactivated. That if you your phone um, too. So you can wipe it. Yes, somebody would have to have the username and the password to log in to com commit that uh, with that. Okay. And but you could go into the phone iCloud an extraction of on the computer it and wipe it when you received it. It was not. I prefer for the state. 
for this What's examination. Oh, bummer. Cellbrite is only available to law enforcement and enterprise solutions. Fair. The phone was not wiped. No questions, John. Well Thank done. You, Lunch. Time for nuggies. Time for nuggies. Time for nuggies. Don't say next witness, Your Honor. <clears throat> we will recess until one. Uh, six, uh, one two, till two fifteen. Recess till two fifteen. Please do not discuss the case. Thanks, Your Honor. It's time for lunch. We're ready for lunch. All right, y'all. Lunch is until 2.15 Eastern. We should be getting back to more forensic information later. I'm going to answer a few questions, and then I am going to go eat. I will be back here at 1.10. No. Yes. 1.10 is when I will start my stream about five minutes before um, five minutes before court comes back because court always takes its sweet time a little bit and I'll try to be on time when I go eat uh, let me make sure that I've turned off turned off this stream so it is not loud in my ears all right we're gonna get to a few different things lunch is until 13 10 13 10 13 10 13 10 Eastern it's gonna be no, 1310 my time, 1310 central, 1410 Eastern. Um, so I'm going to answer a few more questions and then we are going to get to lunch. Will they bring up Snapchat today? I don't know, but we're getting closer to when they can. So we're just like, we're just plodding along with all of this. Um, we're going to have to do a whole episode on cell phone technology and cell phone safety and, and, and what options you have to set your cell phone so there's a recovery person. If something unthinkable happened to you, if you went missing and they needed it, that time can be critical. I've definitely seen cases where um, where adults, you know, young adults have gone missing and their families are not able to access their phone and you've got to send search warrants. The time it takes to send search warrants and start getting last ping information to start knowing where to lo look can be um, very distressing for families where if they had access to iCloud, they might be able to go in and get some of that information sooner than having to wait for search warrants because especially when an adult is thought to be missing and, and you need a search warrant on it, it takes some time to establish probable cause that they're not just out of communication or they've decided to go camping or whatever it is. So these things do come up and they matter. Um, as Nefertiti said, as someone with a cybersecurity background, the whole thing and people changing their passwords makes me happy. Stop using the same password everywhere and stop putting your PI out there. Yes. Look, cybersecurity matters. Um, also you don't want people to get into your phone unless you want to give them permission. But also for those of you that are like, Hey, if you've got nothing to hide, look, I don't need, I don't need law enforcement going through my phone for any reason. If it's going to take you 19 years to unlock my phone, good, unless I go missing, at which point my husband should be able to give you my passcode. <laughs> because um, we, within our family, we know passcodes. So it's nice to have someone with a backup. Look, but I also have friends that are like, look, wipe my, wipe my Kindle account, man. If someone admits to a crime, do you still need evidence? Yes, generally, because false and forced confessions can be a thing. So yes, you would still need evidence to support it. But it really depends because... Depends on the crime. If somebody gets stopped at a traffic stop and they're like, uh, officer, I have, you know, X, Y, Z illegal thing in the car. Then if it's a misdemeanor crime or a felony, they would probably just go find the thing in the car. But the thing is still the evidence. But yes, they still need it. Um, I missed what he said about phone codes that everyone was freaking out about had to feed the fur babies. That's totally fine. He mentioned that if you're trying to brute force a phone that has a six digit code, it can take up to 19 years to brute force the phone. And he also talked about the fact that he was able to create a personal dictionary of numbers to try. Um, and that with that, not personal, but with that custom dictionary of numbers to try, Selvo, Selbright was able, or Celebrite was able to brute force that phone much faster. We, I forgot to do a quick roundup. Let's do a quick roundup. And then we'll do, I have questions and then we will. And then we'll we'll fack around and find out, and then we will yeet ourselves to lunch. 
This morning, we got into a lot more forensic evidence. We've moved on from the crime scene to the cell phones. This is the part of the trial I've really been looking forward to. We did have some tedious moments this morning arguing over whether a particular type of buckshot or cartridge or shotgun shell was used for waterfowl and whether a turkey was a land bird or a waterfowl. It was it was very interesting. But we also saw the defense cross-examine the officer about what Alec Murdoch said. Did he say, I did them so bad. I did it so bad. I did them so bad. They did them so bad. They did them so bad. They were able to slow down the audio over the prosecution's objection. And the majority of our chat still heard I about 18, 17, 18% of the chat uh, based on our poll, said they heard they. So that did get cross-examined on. And I thought the witness did a really good job of saying this was, it was noted. It stuck out in my mind. It immediately stuck out in my mind. And in a later interview that we just heard about in August, we hear that law enforcement for the first time asks Alec Murdoch if he killed his wife and son. But he also said he never clarified the I did him so bad comment because they never got that far. Did Alec Murdoch walk out of the interview? Was the interview terminated? I have questions about the August interview. We haven't gotten to that interview yet, but I want to know more about it. What else happened this morning? Then we started getting into cell information and we've just learned that they were able to get into Paul Murdoch's phone using a brute force with a Celebrite. So we will hear more about what's on that phone. We got the phone records admitted by Verizon, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the morning we're laying foundation in the tech world now. We've moved on, and I can't wait. So with that, we've got some questions. We've got super chats to get to, and we've got a lunch break to get to. So let's fack around. So we've got some questions. We will absolutely do all of the things, and and then we will we will. We will get to get to getting some nuggies. Um, sorry, was the phone was on the phone to a client? Who is this? I'm sure that's been answered. I have no idea when that came in. Question: Since the boat crash kept being mentioned as the possible cause, could they have asked for the phone search warrant to have covered that far back? Um, I think it's it's might be too far back for them to have had records. This was 2021. The boat crash was 20. Well, was it 2018? 2019, I would have to go look at my notes. Um, they only get 18 months that they're going to be kept without a motion to preserve. So I don't know um, if they would have even thought to go back and get boat crash cell phone records. I don't know what was preserved in the criminal investigation of that case, but we will have to see. So we'll just have to see what they already have. Um, let's ask Dick to do things that are not his job. Oh my God, we should. We should, we should be like, Dick, can you, can you run and get everybody lunch enough for the class? All things pink. Emily, I need a sidebar. Okay. Sidebar granted. Where did you get your earrings? They're Kendra Scott. I watch them all the time and always wonder where I can get them. Kendra Scott. They're Kendra Scott. Uh, I think they're the Sophies. They're not terribly expensive. They're fun. Uh, Poot is out there trying to confuse the jury. That's Poot's whole job. Uh, um, Holly, I'm just a charming fuddy duddy who doesn't understand all this tickety tech. That's what he was going with. That's what he was going with. He was like, I don't understand an MO and an MF and a WTF and a, but again, he might've clarified it more for the jury if the prosecution just glossed over it. Sometimes when the prosecution is going through really technical data, it might be better to just let the jury be confused and not clarify it. If you find it confusing and you know, like internally through your team, you know, maybe don't clarify it for them. I used to work in cell service. This is painful. It was a bit, it was a bit painful. Um, someone sent Dick an acronym cheat sheet. They were looking at the acronym cheat sheet. They had an acronym cheat sheet. Hopefully we'll see that. Um, Allison said, important. I just figured out over the weekend the significance of your cat names after all this time watching you. And it suddenly came to me. Yes, my brother's cats, my two cats are brothers. They are orange. They are very sassy orange tabbies named Fred and George. Greeting from Madrid. Love your channel. Thank you, Marta. Question. Um, Elizabeth, say I'm dead. Well, we don't want to say you're dead, but okay. Say, say something awful happens and my phone has a fingerprint scanner. Can the police use my finger to unlock the phone? I don't know if they do or if they don't. I have not seen that circumstance because by when, it, well, I wasn't, I had never seen that done. Is it theoretically possible? I don't know. I don't know if they would have to ask the Emmy. I really don't know the answer to that question. 
Is it theoretically possible with a fingerprint scan? I had imagine it's theoretically possible. They say for the footprints, they put their feet in the shoes and walk in them. So I, I don't know. I would have to look. I don't know if it's practically done. Emily's frustration with Dick at this point trial is making me laugh. Emily, let's ask him the question before groaning. I should let him ask the question before groaning, though there's times. Couldn't Verizon have produced a report converting GMT to EST for the court? I don't know if that's within their system. And if it is, somebody might complain. What if they do it this way or this way? Can they track Wi-Fi calling like this? Um, I don't know. The Wi-Fi calling doesn't track to cell tower. It would track to router and router tracking might be more specific. It's not the same, but it can be tracked. Um, is it possible that Faraday bag thing is a uh, is a defense trying to imply that Alec Murdoch didn't attempt to wipe the phones? Maybe when he could have easily done so. I don't know if he could have easily done so because he couldn't get into Paul's phone, so he couldn't get into Paul's uh, iCloud, I would assume. Um, but maybe it's like, oh, you didn't protect it. Maybe it's to show they didn't think Paul was or Alec was a suspect, but their argument is that it was a rush to judgment and they only thought Alec was a suspect. So I don't know. Question, do you think the prosecution bringing up the extender could be setting up to say that Alec wasn't where he said he was during the 911 call? It's setting up, I think the reason they brought it up is because they needed to explain, they needed to explain the sheet and what was on the sheet. And the sheet included calls from an extender. We don't know if there are any calls that hit on an extender, but we know that there's a separate code for that. And I want to know more. Um, my daughter looks so much like me. My phone opens for her face. <laughs> That's kind of sweet, but also it might be, it might be helpful or it might be like, get out of my phone. Um, Nurse Hill had a trick for everybody to, to subtract the military time. Thank you. Um, I think Dick needs to phone a friend. He was having a moment. Ice storms in Texas for the next couple days. Same here. Working from home with my lawnard puppy and watching live for a change. So glad you're here live, all things pink. Um, Canada has dill pickle chips too. We have some of those in the state. Those aren't as hard to find. It's the all dressed that's impossible to find in the States. Um, Juniper said a late good morning from Colorado with my lavender latte sounds delicious. I can't thank you enough for all your coverage. I wouldn't understand this without you. Well, thank you. I am always here for the flattery. We will take it. We will take it. We will say thank you. We, I should have, I should have employed the goat much earlier today. The goat needed to scream. There were moments. There were moments. What kind of nugs are for lunch? Same nugs every day. I will probably eat the exact same lunch every day in trial. Um, though something made me flushed yesterday and I couldn't figure out what it was that I ate that didn't agree with me, which is the fun thing about food allergies sometimes. By the afternoon, I was like bright pink. I was like, what did I eat? So I've got to figure that out today. Every time I hear a cough, I have to think it's the member of the jury who had the COVID symptoms. They excuse that individual. They're not on the jury, but somebody is coughing nonstop. It could be allergies. It could be weather. It could be discomfort. It could be dry. It could be anything. Uh, Mel B said speculation. He didn't expect Paul's body to be so horrifically damaged in the heat of the moment. Switch guns after, uh, for going after Maggie. It's possible. I mean, we will see. Favorite dip dip for nugs. I don't always dip my nugs. The Trader Joe's nugs sometimes get a, um, get a Chipotle mayo, which is, if you don't know the Chipotle mayo, it's delicious, but there is an incredible Primal Foods uh, Chipotle mayo that's really good with nugs, but sometimes I just do them with a little sesame oil and sesames um, because they're delicious that way too. So it just depends. If I have ranch around the house from Chipotle, I will do that too. How did Maggie and Paul end up there? Were they forcibly walked there? We don't know how. We don't know how Maggie and Paul ended up at the kennels yet. Um, someone fix his tie, please. That's a very fair, that's very fair question. Wasn't defense limit to scope on direct? Yes. If so, why bring up the third interview? See, I don't know why it was brought up. It was brought up in direct. Um, they, they said that they interviewed him one more time. Um, our dot pattern password saved. I've got an Android. I don't know much about Android. I'm sure the chat knows more, excuse me, knows more than me. Um, Jeff said, my tinfoil hat wonders if Alec was involved with some sort of Dixie Mafia and if this was a hit to divert attention from crimes. I don't know. Um, he's been charged with over 100 indictments. It's He was he was involved in more than they thought. Uh, question, what happens if we get a hung jury? It's not unlikely. It's not 
it's not an unreasonable question. Um, they try the case again or don't. They get to choose if they try the case again. Also, have you heard a theory that Buster was this? I have not heard that. Um, and I, they have Buster's phone. If Buster's phone had showed him there at the relevant times, I'm sure the investigation would have gone a different way. So I, I don't know. I don't put a lot of credibility into Buster was there because they're going to have all of Buster's phone activity. So if Buster's phone activity was sus, especially with the fact that Buster's name came up so much in connection with the Stephen Smith killing. Um, and I do call it a killing. Sometimes I will call it a suspicious death, but that there is no way that kid was hit by a car, even though they ruled it a, um, ruled it a hit and run. That is not, that is not what happened in that case. So that is still a, a suspicious death, but he was, um, Buster's name came up in connection a lot with that. So I think if the cell phone had shown anything, they would have investigated that more. That just is an assumption. I am making an assumption. Not only would the jury doubt what was said, but also what AM meant could be taken that he meant he failed as a father with Paul in many ways. Yeah, he could. He could. And I agree, Jilly Bear. I think it's only fair that we keep an open mind. The prosecution's not done with their case yet. And there are lots of interpretations to that statement. I think it's why they didn't put it in their opening statement because the prosecution's arguing it's a slipped confession or it's a, you know, kind of unconscious confession, but they didn't put it in their opening. It better not be the linchpin of their case because it is open to a lot of different interpretations. And I think the jury will do that or they'll disregard it entirely and say, that's not what we cared about. Brittany said, thank you. You're welcome. I'm from Hampton. Um, Stephen was my friend and already have my mind made up, but appreciate your unbiased and explanation. You're welcome, Brittany. I'm so sorry for the loss of your friend. Um, I'm glad they reopened the investigation. He and his family deserve justice uh, for what was done to him. And if there are threads that weren't pulled on, I mean, of course, sometimes investigations go cold and there's nothing that can be done, but ruling a death one way when it clearly wasn't is fuckery of the highest degree. And I hope that they get answers um, and answers as to why the fuckery was afoot in the first place. In a documentary I watched last night, the town said they assumed it was Alec Murdoch right away because of SLED releasing the statement that there was no threat. That's very possible. And the defense keeps asking about that statement being released. Um, but I think it cuts either way. I think it cuts to they believed it was Murdoch or they believe the Murdoch family was being targeted. And if the Murdoch family is specifically being targeted or if they're being targeted because of the boat case, there's nobody really else to target except maybe Alec and then the rest of Hampton County is safe. It's just the Murdoch's that aren't, but then shouldn't you have told the rest of the family or maybe they thought somebody was targeting Paul specifically because of the boat case. That's what Alec said over and over. And if somebody's targeting Paul because of the boat case and Paul's been murdered, the rest of the community is not really in danger. So I think it can go a lot of ways. I really hope they get to the person who released the statement so we can just answer that question um, Amanda said, I feel strongly that if he was convicted of murder a long time ago in the court of public, I feel strongly that he was convicted of murder a long time ago in the court of public opinion. Subconsciously, if one thinks he's guilty, your brain will hear I, I am definitely not a neuroscientist. I don't know if, if he has, I've seen a lot of people, um, saying that the state does not have a strong case, but maybe it's just the sections of the internet. I am in the internet is big and vast, but I've heard a lot of people say, I've got a lot of questions about this one. Um, Emily, really enjoy your coverage. Thank you. I, I'm here to try to do the best. Defense is trying so hard to break this witness. And he's like, um, no, thanks. He was. He was like, can I get back to lunch? Um, <laughs> I think you deserve a fabulous chair. I mean, I do have, this is my fabulous chair back here. I do enjoy this chair. It just doesn't have a, if it had a higher back, though, it would block all of the background. And that would be kind of a bummer. Um, let's see. Uh, question. With this town's bias slash fear, why wasn't the trial held in a different jurisdiction? The request was denied. Um, and I also think they found people who in Ham oh, in Colton County, because that's where this trial is, not Hampton, that um, didn't really know the Murdoch and didn't really care. So um, Eric said they were killed in daylight. Night scope doesn't matter. They weren't necessarily. I mean, it the timing that they are putting the deaths at is around 8 40 p.m., but it is 8.40 p.m. in June. I don't think it's necessarily daylight, but it's not necessarily dark as shit. So we will see. Emily slowed down his statement 2.5. He says they, when the they slowed it down in court, I still heard I. Emily, were either of these guns reported stolen or missing to police before the murders? No. 
And the one gun that legitimately was missing or that we know was legitimately missing was just kind of phone a friend about it. It was like, I told some people that it was kind of missing, but not stolen because Alec thought Paul had maybe lost it or misplaced it, not that it was stolen. And so he let the police know that's what he said in his interview. Um, could the amount of guns they own play a factor into why they didn't report guns missing? It could. Maybe they didn't realize guns were missing until later. Always possible. Um, but it sounded like they only had two of those ARs. So I think you would notice those. They are, um, they are expensive weapons. So maybe you would notice. So I love your Ames Lounge share. It is inspired. <laughs> it is inspired. So, um, I forget how North Ireland is. June is dark about 11 p.m. Yeah, and I don't know with South Carolina in June. I just know from Middle Tennessee, it's not, I mean, in June, it's not all the way dark at that time of night, but it's also definitely not daylight, if that makes sense. So question, did Alec Murdoch confess to his son's murder in the recording played yesterday during session? I think that's undetermined. I think that's for the jury to determine. There's a lot there's, it's not as if I'm sitting here going, there's no other way to interpret it. There's a couple different ways to hear it. And then there's a couple different ways to interpret what was said, given the question that preceded it. I think it's a question for the jury. I know what I heard, but I also think it's a question for the jury. And ultimately they're going to decide and they might eat the whole thing and say, it doesn't matter. So with that, y'all, it is time to go get some lunch nuggies for me. When I get back, I'll ask you what you're having. I will be back streaming at 110 central. So in less than an hour, I will be back here live. So it is time to say goodbye. If you guys have other questions, the chat um, is open over there. You guys can pop over to that stream while you wait and chat, get some lunch, but this will direct you right over there. If I missed your super chat, I apologize and thank you. And we will be back this afternoon. And I think I played the wrong intro this morning. Thank you all for your patience. And uh, yeah, you know where to find me around the interwebs. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I'm going live and I'll talk to you soon. You can find all the Law Nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D. Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the Quick Bits. <laughs>